Welcome to a very special episode of From the Horse's Mouth. It is a National Hunt season preview. I've got Ruby Walsh, I've got Frank Kiki, and we're all here at Leopardstown. And by the way, if you're listening to this podcast, you can actually watch it on YouTube as well. We'll put a link to the show notes how to get into that. Now, it's going to be great crack. We're going to have a really good look, a very nice, long, but detailed look. Ruby Walsh is going to tell us exactly what's going to win every race at the Cheltenham Festival. And Frank Hickey is going to tell us in short form the prices and exactly what's going to happen. And those good, I think you call them, Frank, value losers. You like an odd value loser oh, every now and again? Oh, them, yeah. Yeah, something that's smashed up from 33s into 5 to 1. Exactly, and, then... and it's just great to be able to do it live here as well. <laughs> live, good man, yeah. We are recording, but Frank Hickey loves an old dead. Uh, dig before we get stuck in to the national season the the main question i suppose for national season on everyone's lips ruby is um would you be happy to pay seven pounds fifty for a point in live times or <laughs> wherever you are be it Cheltenham festival or otherwise seven pound fifty a point are you happy i probably have paid more for a point somewhere along the way pk as yeah. has everybody um the price of points to be honest with you it's irrelevant to me like, well, for I'd, I'd be happy to pay £7.50 for a pint of gin and tonic. Yeah, that's it's not apples and oranges, is it, though, as, uh, <laughs> as has often been the case. Uh, yeah, pint of gin and tea. You don't even drink, though, Frank, do you? I, when I do, my drink is a double gin and tonic and a pint glass with two tonics. Well, you make a count when you do. Yeah. Fair play to you. Double gin and tea. That'd be about 19 quid then, would it? It's <laughs> about <laughs> 20 quid, yeah. <laughs> that's why I take 7 <laughs> Right, uh, we will be obviously talking about horse racing and looking ahead to the national season as a whole, not just the Cheltenham Festival. I want to look back on last year's national season, lads, uh, as the the darkness comes in and the, the, the evenings close in and the, and the mornings get later and later. But let's think about those brilliant scenes from last year. Over the entire season last year, Ruby, and maybe it is a Cheltenham, what was your highlight of last year's jump season, last season? Oh, what was the highlight? Um, the, ah, there, was, there, was, there was incredible racing. Um, I, I did enjoy Cheltenham. I thought Honeysuckle was magnificent. Um, obviously, you would love to have seen Altior turn up against Enigra Mean, Florian Porter backed it up. I thought a Blue Tower spectacular in the Gold Cup. Um, I don't know what was my highlight. There wasn't one standout highlight for me. I just thought there was there was great action across the board. I know some of the fields were smaller than I did at Cheltenham, and you would have liked uh, more competition in some of the races. He would love if Bob, the real Bob Bollinger had turned up to take on Gallop and the Champ, but that race still had so much bloody drama. Um, you know, I, I think there was, I think there was way more pluses than there was minuses. Yeah, it was. It was very good. Frank, in, in, can you cast your mind back to last year, last season? Um, like I think Lord Lariat winning the Irish National for back-to-back -back wins at prices for Dermot McLaughlin was an amazing achievement. Um, what is it about that race and um, providing small, so-called smaller trainers with? Big, big wins. It's, it's, it happened so often recently. Yeah, it's unbelievable. But um, yeah, he's got the magic formula for it anyway, doesn't he? Yeah, big um, time. Keep an eye on what he has for this year. Okay. Any idea yet? Wow, wow, maybe. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. And yeah. spell that one first. Uh, w a, w a. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. Okay, all right. We'll keep an eye out for him. All right. Ah, it's just one that's a staying chase that's already been exposed for him. But all right. Lightning never it's strikes three times huh? lately, has it? Ah, uh, it did. Yeah, very well handicapped over hers relative to his chase mark, but. Wah wah, watch out for wah wah. In, in, hopefully, maybe two fairy house, but uh, well, if he ends up in fairy house, we definitely have the yeah. second look, wouldn't well, we? We definitely would. Yeah, it's a it's a funny old race. The Irish National giving big price winners for smaller connections, which is great. Right, we got a lot of horses to talk about as the national season preview begins. We're going to start with the chasers, and then we'll move on to the herders, and we're going to start from the bottom up in terms of two miles and then beyond. Right, Frank, two mile crop of last year's novices. I suppose we can start with because we're always keen to see which novices will make it. Which ones are you looking forward to in particular? Fernie Hollow. Yeah. I definitely. Like, look, obviously a champion bumper winner. And that was a good champion bumper, I think. Beat Appreciated, Queensbrook, Third Time Lucky, Escalade, The Glancing Queen. They're all in behind. Um, beat Bob Andrew. And his only start over hurdles was impressive in two chase starts. Uh, beat um, Riviere de Tell in the Grade 1 at Christmas at Leopardstown. Um, previous to that, beat Corsa Bleem, who's touched off in the Grade 1 at Punchestown. Um, third that day was the Devil's Coachman, who won a Grade 2 Boyne Hurdle. Um, fifth was Gentleman to me, who won a Grade 1 in the So his form's really strong. Everything stacks up. Your concern with him is he's missed the second half of the season the last two years. And can he stay fit for the whole season? Mm. But from a pure ability point of view, he's definitely the most exciting novice. As far as two-mile chasers go, Ruby, at William Mullins, has there, with him, with Enigamine, with potentially another couple, 
I mean, it's going to be hard to split all these these cracking horses, isn't it? Yeah, gentlemen to me and Shaq and Pursua, yeah. I mm. mean, if there's, there's four off the top of your head, of course it's going to be hard. And I, ideally, you wouldn't want to run them all in the same race first time up. I mean, something will go to the hilly way. You'd imagine one will go to the Tingle Creek. Uh, I'd say that's unlikely to be Shaq and Pursua, seeing as it didn't happen for him there last year. Willie's a creature of habit. Could you see Enogamine going back to the hilly way? I probably could. So where do you go with Blue Lord, gentlemen to me? Um... Where do those horses go? One of them will have to go to the Tinker Creek, I would, I w- I would imagine. Yeah. Um, and I guess, possibly, gentlemen to me. Um, but, you know, Blue Lord has to be slotted in there, shacking. I wonder would he step up and trip? That was going to be a question, yeah. I yeah. mean, we, we kind of know now he maybe is not good enough at, at two miles, or is that yeah. unfair? Well, to be fair, when, you know, looking back on it, I don't think we ever thought he was a, a two-mile chaser. When we got him originally, we thought he was more of a stamina horse. It was just how he jumped and his way of galloping that made him a two-mile chaser. So... I don't think he'd be afraid to step up and trip. When you step up and trip, what are you stepping up to? You're stepping up to Alaho, you're stepping up to Gallop in the Champ, at Plutar, you're stepping, <laughs> whatever way you go about it, uh, there's no there's no soft way of doing it. So I could see Shacken stepping up with those generation of novices coming through, Fernie Hollow, Blue Lord, Gentleman to Me, and obviously Energamine being the top dog. So I think Shacken would be the one that would step up and trip where, I don't know. Yeah, it's... Uh, you- Need a good race planner, Willie Mullins. I know, Frank, you auditioned for the job last year. How did that go? Um, what was the name of the horse you said? One, you... one of the few off dates Willie had, and he made the wrong choice. <laughs> yeah, Frank Hickey told I Ruby to tell him. Because he, I stuck my neck out on <laughs> Frank Hickey's advice that a mare in a handicap hurdle in Fairy House, who was a novice, went against all of Willie Mullins' traditions, and I got it in the neck. So I duly told him. It was... Frank Kiki's idea. He asked me who Frank Kiki was. I told him who you were. <laughs> and uh, I told him it was an audition for the job and that you weren't getting it. That's it. You get one shot, as, uh, as Eminem said. And I'm afraid to say you, 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 you missed. Let's get back to Shishkin. Um, Frank obviously beat Enigamine at Ascot, one of the race for the ages last season. That was uh, when Ruby talks of highlights. I said Altior earlier. Shishkin didn't turn yeah, up in the well, Yeah, we, 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 do, we, do, we do what you meant. Thanks, we do what PK, you meant, Ruby. We do what you meant. I'm not the type to always correct you, Ruby, so don't worry about it. Um, Shishkin beat Enigamine, um, one of the highlights of the season, obviously, but then the complete flop at Chatham. Where, where do we stand, Frank, with him? Ah, look, I don't think you can hold one poor run. There was something wrong with him. There had to be. Like, as in, I remember after he jumped the first and he, and he went maybe another 50 yards going, something's wrong with him. He wasn't going at all. Um, so you'd be waiting to forgive him and we know at his best he's a top class horse. So I wouldn't hold it against him. We could see him, you know, doing the usual in the UK, depending how often he runs. I was just reading Nicky's stable tour. He was saying, you know, he might try and get him to the Tingle Creek if he's ready on time, but if not, he'll follow the route, the same route as last year. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be holding one poor run when he clearly wasn't himself against him. That was his only defeat, bar his fall um, on Hurdle's debut at Newbury. So, yeah, still a top-class horse. Champion chaser last year, Enigermeen. Um, obviously, we saw what happened to Shishkin, but let's talk about Enigermeen, Ruby, because he was pretty impressive. He beat what he beat, and one assumes Willie's going to same path. I don't know if he the identical same path. No? Um, he probably started in the hilly way. Obviously, Shakin missed... The dial a bit, the old dial a bit, whatever mm-hmm. it's called now here at Christmas. And then Enigamine ended up going to Ascot where he got beaten by Shishkin. You know, depending on what kind of a race he has in the hilly way, I wouldn't be surprised if he came here at Christmas and went DRF Cheltenham. I don't know if it, he, he missed both of those chases last year because he went to, to Ascot. So, you know, I think that could be a slight tweak to the plan. But time will tell you. Let's see how... In, uh, Gentleman to me, Blue Lord, Fernie mm. Hollow, they'll all have to fit in, but Enigar Mean says the standard. He was brilliant last year. Change of tactics worked on him at Cheltenham, uh, where he sat in compared to making it at Ascot. So um, he sets a standard. Definitely got the rub of the green in Cheltenham. Yeah. Uh, the rain didn't inconvenience him one bit. Yeah. A lot of talk, obviously, before the Champ Chase last year was that Ascot would suit him perfectly and, and Cheltenham wouldn't. I know, look, Shishkin didn't run at all. But did he, did he at least show that? He's nearly as good at Cheltenham. So he showed he was better, didn't he? That, then, uh, sorry, then at Ascot, when he was, well, maybe he was better, but one assumes Shishkin didn't run a race at all, so you just basically yeah, take him out. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, I didn't think either or would overly inconvenience him. It was a slight change of tactics. He had set out to, to, to drag Shishkin mm. at Ascot. He was sitting in to, to ride a different race on him at, at Cheltenham and um, 
he's a very good horse, he's a great jumper, he's a good galloper. Um, he definitely sets a standard. And those novices, we spoke about Edward Stone, Gentleman to Me, Fernie Hollow, those horses, I think they have a bit more to improve to get to his level than maybe the Gold Cup contingent have. The one to beat? Oh, 100%. Like, like, I think, you know, everyone's going to say, oh, Shishkin won Ascot, he's the better horse. But I do think Connections learnt a bit more about Henrik Amin that day than maybe Connections learnt about Shishkin. Um, and look, Shishkin blew out in, in Cheltenham, mean, you can't really know, but... Um, you have to remember to Ascot, I think, was two miles, one furlong, and the, the champion chase is actually just shy of two miles. If you stop the Ascot race at the champion chase trip, Inner Grameen looks like he's going to win. Like, you know, it's only the last 50 yards just can run some down. And um, I've always felt Inner Grameen was the better horse, and I'd stick with it. I think he is, and I think they've learned at Ascot what to do with him. And, He's the right tune, he's the one. Like Shishkin could come back to his best and I still think Enrico means the one to beat. Ruby Edward Stone, um, could you see him stepping up in, uh, in term, into, into open company, could, mixing with the ones you've mentioned? I wish I did a little bit more homework. Frank, I'm fairly sure he was a natural winner of the Arkle, was he? Yeah. So physically it's very hard to imagine that uh, Edward Stone has developed or matured through the summer and does that standard, is that going to be good enough to get to Enrico Mean Shishkin's level? I'm not so sure. I think he was a very professional novice chaser. He was a very good winner of the Arkle. Um, but I think he could be vulnerable. And that's not to say if Shishkin doesn't turn up, can Edwardstone win the Tingle Creek? He'd have to possibly take on Gentleman to me. Um, yeah, I think he could. But do I think he'd win the champion chase ultimately? No, but he could win the Tingle Creek. He could win a Clarence House. There's a lot of good races to be won with a horse like Edwardstone. And he'd definitely be worth following in the early part of the season. Yeah. Like if you even think like I know gentleman to me beat him at Aintree, but that was his seventh start of the season. Yeah. I and mean, he probably was. He he ran in everything to be fair to him and his only defeat was at Aintree and his season reappearance when he was brought down at work. No bad, no fault of his own. So like he actually improved with every run and reached the peak in yeah. gentleman and then was going over the top. Yeah. So he definitely yeah. could like he he was better than I thought he was, to be honest, last year. I thought going to the Arkle now he was kind of a vulnerable favourite, but he won in tremendous fashion and, and I wouldn't put a, like, I'd agree Ruby, I don't think he'd win a champion chase considering the level of horses he'd be up against, but you could definitely see him winning yeah. one or two decent races along the way. You'd almost traditionally kind of think, maybe you're not going up for the two mile division, we'll, we'll have a crack at the Ryanair, but then as Ruby said, then you're running into an alloy. Like, I, there's nothing think, to suggest he needs to step up yeah, and trip. Why, why, why wouldn't he be good enough to, you know what I mean? Like, they have an Arkle winner and traditionally the Arkle winners have a really strong record and I know as Ruby said, the problem is he's eight, rising nine, so maybe he's home to the same improvement as other horses, but they're definitely going to have a crack at it, like, and... Rightly so. Yeah, yeah definitely. Right, rightly so. Speaking of the two and a half mile division, let's talk about that. It is now a division in its own, thanks to the Ryanair chase. Um, Ruby, we start with Alaho. Um, I want to talk about, obviously, his win at Punchestown over the three miles, which is forced upon William Mullins because there is no two and a half mile chase, a uh, graded one at Punchestown. But when we see that type of performance from Alaho, we do think... Oh, King George, and sure, look, give him a go. Give him a go in the Gold Cup. Give him a go. Sure, look, who knows about that? But look, e even with Alaho, it was a mistake we made with Cui Viga as well. Cui, when she won her first main hur mayor's hurdle, she came back to Punchestown and dropped down to the champion hurdle, and Punjabi beat her. Um, Alaho won his first Ryanair, came back to Punchestown and dropped down to the two mile chase and couldn't cope with Shacken, wasn't it? So. You know, he, so both of them, Cui Viga came back to Punchestown in time, went up to three miles. Alaho came back to Punchestown this year and went up to three miles. So, um, And has that opened the doors? Probably opened the door to the King George from, no doubt about it. Uh, it'll be interesting. He could start as early as the Clonmel Oil. I'd imagine Willie would love to have a run into him going to the King George if he chooses to go that way. I think he will. He's talking about it. So he could go Clonmel Oil and on to the King George because the John Durkin in early December is too tight as a as a stepping stone, not a stepping stone. The John Durkin is a race worth winning, but if you win the John Durkin, the, the, it just doesn't give you enough of time to recover for the King George. Um, so I, I think he could go John Durkin, King George, yeah. And then, then where does he go? He's owned by Chievely Park. Are they really going to want Alaho clashing with at Plutar, all going well, when you can divide and conquer? That's what I would see. But if you win King George, do you really go back for Ryanair? Uh, I think you do. Yeah. I think you do. Three and a quarter miles is a completely different contest. 
and um, yeah, I would. Look, it's yeah, William I, Wallace, right? He's won yeah. two. So we, like, yeah. he's, if, if, if we're talking about horses going to potential challenge races at this stage in, in October, yeah, but just, Alaho's done the right now. We're all guilty of it, and no, probably nobody more so than me, but like, there's the first half of the season is, is, is as important as the second half. So like, even talking now about where Alaho end up in March, it's probably more relevant to think about where Alaho is going to end up between now and Christmas. Yeah. That's probably Clonmel Oil, possibly the King George. That's you know that's his path too. You say Christmas, more like New Year's Day. So you know that's where he's going to. I think that's the um, important part. And of he looks all. perfect for the King George as well. I think he, he looks terrible for too. Yeah, and with a view to, to when you take last year's run on the John Durkin into account, or last season's run on the John Durkin, he was laboured. I think yeah, it's fair to say his first run every year okay. is laboursome. He is a big horse. He's stuffy. He takes a run, and there's no way after winning last year's John Durkin you could have pulled him out in the King George. He hadn't recovered from running the John Durkin to run him into King George. That's why in time next season, the John Durkin is coming back to Morgiana weekend. and Or the, not that weekend, but the weekend after, to give horses the chance to run again at Christmas. Because if you're looking at the programme and you're looking at the sport, we all, me included, you want to see the best horses as often as you can. And therefore, the, the programme has to fit the time to allow that to happen. So the John Durkin coming back to the same weekend as the Morgiana will allow those horses to run again at Christmas, be it here or Kempton or wherever in the UK. But you want to get them out yeah. more often. Well, of course, we want to see them, that's for sure. And fair play to Alan King with the likes of Edward Stone. He's eight, eight runs last year or last season. That's fantastic to see. So Alaho, likely Clonmel, then maybe Kempton, and then who knows after that, I suppose. Um, Frank, we've talked a lot about Alaho for, for Ryanair and the two and a half miles. Is there any horse worth discussing in this division? I'm uh, sure there are. Well, look, you know, I know Gallopin' Champs won over three miles uh, at Punchstown as a novice hurdler, but there is a chance maybe, you know, he does look a bit speedy. Is there a chance that he's too speedy to really be an out-and-out -out stare and he ends up dropping back and trip? Maybe. Ruby, tell me more. But it could be. It could, you, can't it rule, happen. you can't rule it out, but I imagine Willie will be training him as a Gold Cup horse. Um, where does he start? He's a second season novice. He, there's a possibility of starting in the second season novice and maybe coming here, we're in Leopardstown, coming here at Christmas for the Savills, but um, it'll be interesting, and he'll have to prove he stays, Frank is right. Um, look, is he too speedy for a Gold Cup? I won. I only won two Gold Cups, and they were both on speedy, a, a yeah, two-miler. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, just, I just kind of played devil's advocate for what yeah. might happen. Like, like, the one I suppose I look at that's a little bit, maybe a forgotten horse, like the one thing I would say is, nobody buys a horse to win a Ryanair. I would suggest, um, and that's why I would say maybe Alaho might go for the Gold Cup. It would depend on too on what happens with that Plutar. You know, he's been injury free. You know, were he to miss a Gold Cup and Alaho win a King George, maybe he would end up there and will open up the Chris division. Chris Richardson was obviously a good talker, if that's the case. Yeah, but if, um, he, can, if he can change William Mullins' mind, fair play. But uh, the one I thought was my Drogo has been completely forgotten about. Mm. Um, he potentially could be champion chase horse or Ryanair. But, you know, as a novice hurdler, he's quite good. He won a grade one at Aintree. Um, his he was beaten at bumper debut at Cheltenham on a fifty to one shot, um, and he was undefeated over hurdles. And he was going to win um, at Cheltenham when he tipped up two out, came back and won uh, at Cheltenham. Then um, beating Torn and Frey, Torn and Frey came out and won a competitive handicap on trials day at Cheltenham off a mark of one hundred and thirty one. Um, he's one that I would be keeping an eye on this year um, okay. if he gets back in, you know, fullness of health. Yeah. Um, he's definitely got ability um, and he could be, you know, champion chase slash Ryanair yeah, they, type. They do think a huge amount about him uh, at Skeletons by Drogo. He'd look very impressive. Fakir Dudery, he's, he's, he's into the Al Ella territory now. He's, he's an entry horse. He's not a, he's not a Cheltenham horse. Is that, is that unfair? He could be a Cheltenham horse without Alaho. Yeah. But time has proven that he is that golf behind Alaho. So he's still a very, very good horse. He's, as you say, an entry horse. But you, you see the golf. You saw what... Fakir was able to do to easy game and one other of Willie's in last year's Clonmel Oil. Just being, he is a grade one horse, Fakir. You saw what he did to grade three horses, grade two, grade three horses. You see the golf. He was a classic example. Royal Rendezvous was the other one, wasn't yeah. it? Easy game and Royal Rendezvous. He, like their handicapper stroke grade three horses. You saw what Fakir could do to those in the Clonmel Oil. And then you can see what Alaho does to Fakir the diary. So... But it's, it's, un, it's, it's unfair to say he's not a Cheltenham horse. Like his record is fourth in a Supreme as a four year old, second in an Arkle, second in a Ryanair. Like, you know, 
he's beaten far more horses at Cheltenham than I've beaten him. I, um, I agree with Frank, it's just... He just hasn't won a big one, but I mean, he's still not that old a horse. And the Melling Chase probably been a little bit less competitive than yeah. um, the Ryanair, etc. So, um, look, if, again, it all depends. If Aloha runs in the Ryanair, you're probably looking at everything playing for places. But for any reason, if Aloha wasn't there, it becomes wide open and he'd become a massive player in the race then. Okay. So my takeaways there are watch Aloha win by a neck at Clonmel, back in for the King George. Hopefully he drifts. Frank, you'll, if he does run a stinker, you'll, you'll push him out, yeah, for the King George? As in, when I say stinker, he only wins by a neck. Don't, don't listen to Ruby Walsh. That's assuming I'm working on the day. I'm nah, not Frank, working. He can, he yeah. work every day. As we find out, whenever we ask to go on the pod, you're always bloody working. Um, and watch out for my Drogo. That's a good shout. We'll keep yeah, it, no, uh, I keep think my Drogo's definitely won. Um, you know, you're, you're trying to look at two and a half milers or even two milers in the UK and there's not much depth and he's definitely won with the ability yeah. to make a mark. I, I wondered watching Blue Lord last year. Could he be a two and a half miler? Yeah. yeah. You always had a soft spot for him, Ruby. Well, maybe soft spot's not the wrong word, but you definitely were keen when he wasn't supposed to be winning those two mile novices. You were always mentioning him. You think there's a race, a good race. I think he's a fair horse, but I just, I just wonder will he eventually have to step up and trip to maximise his potential. And the other one, he's free going, but he's getting a bit older. Funny Hollow is a Westerner, which would say stamina. So look, as he gets older and gets less enthusiastic, I suppose. Will he be quick enough to be a two miler? Only time will tell. Do you like bumper horses? Are, like the bumper winners are generally stairs anyway, aren't they? Most of them, yeah. So like, yeah. Bash um. champagne fever. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, we know that Fernie Hollow, obviously, again, same as Alho and our Blue Tart, same ownership, so they're probably not going to clash. But as we know, things can happen. Three milers, we've already touched on Gallop and Deshaun. We'll come back to him in a second. Oh, I actually have one more, if one? I could bring up. Uh, ask Ruby about Jungle Boogie. You know, I have a soft oh, spot yeah. for the horse. Yeah, but he he obviously, he's injury prone. He's injury prone. Oh, Jungle Boogie. He's like, different. He's, uh, yeah, like it's in, would he ever make the Has he had three again? runs? Four three runs? runs, and he's going three? to be, he's nearly rising nine. So like he's obviously very difficult to, to keep sound, but by God, has he got an engine? If by any chance, he does look great, but sure, it's if, the if same old thing. Fit, it's a massive. What's if. a good horse and what's a great horse? Yeah, great horse is sound keep horse. Going, so I know. For jungle I know. If, he, if he lined up at Cheltenham and the ground was soft, I know it's a massive if. Like, is that what he's playing Antipost? But he's just a I'll horse. I'll bring, bring that back to Willie. Your former ex race planner suggests going straight to the Cheltenham Festival. Straight to the Cheltenham with Jungle Boogie. Boogie. Race planner for one run, race. Give him a run there to start December and then off until Cheltenham. Why not? If that's, yeah, that's the plan. That's Jungle Boogie in the map of Denmark. Does so he get one run a year? He said one run a year. Yeah. You want to waste it in December. <laughs> <laughs> See, go, that's why go, you didn't get the go job. Go John Dirk and win that. <laughs> Uh, three milers. Absolute star. We mentioned a couple of times already, Frank. Um, he's not favourite, despite winning the Gold Cup in a hat canter last season. Ugh, people love potential, don't they? Yeah. Over, over. Like we know, he's a brilliant horse, but people like to latch on to up and comers and potential. And yeah, like Galpin de Champ looks good, but he has to go some still to reach Absolute Tarrant's level. Um, he was a brilliant winner of the Gold Cup. If you're being very cynical, though. Was it a bad Gold Cup? As impressive as he was, like if you look at Mon Ali, or Manila Indo's form, uh, you know, he was poor up and down Royal, probably needed it to be fair. Went to the King George, was terrible. Uh, ran well in the Gold, he ran okay here in the Irish Gold Cup, ran well in the Gold Cup and then was poor again at Punchestown. Like Isn't he, he like 30 pounds better at Cheltenham than anywhere else? Oh yeah, yeah. but like as in, none of his other runs were really, mm overly good and even Protect Rat was like second in a Paddy Power Gold Cup off 1-5 I can't remember was it 1-5-3 or 1-5-4 um, won him. and many crowds and then you know he just as impressive as Aplutar was I'm not sure the rest of the farm is up to much myself mm -hmm. um, and that's just something look you're nitpicking Aplutar is a brilliant horse he's still only what is he 8 rising 9 mm -hmm. so he's not too old you, you could say he's probably just hitting his peak um, but the only thing is he has been on the go since he was a three-year-old hurdler in France and there is probably that chance that maybe he will start to decline a little bit earlier than maybe you know, a national hunt horse in Ireland starting off at five mm. or six. Did you notice that Ruby with the French horses tend to peak it a little was, bit earlier? Uh, no it was a common thought and maybe a lot of horses do but I think the great ones keep going. I think Cato started as a three-year-old of ours in France too. I think the the, the the brilliant ones can keep going but the others then because we say all oh, the French they're gone at seven well a lot of horses 
have peaked at eight that are Irish, only they've started a year later. <laughs> so yeah. it's the same difference. The good ones you can just maintain it and keep going. It's the long run, it's the one out of my head. Yeah, the peak young. Yeah, masterminded the same. Uh, yeah. It was brilliant at five, six, and then it was, you know, was gone a bit after that. But yeah, it can happen. But there's plenty of Irish horses, if you think about it, only it's not a, a conversation anyone has. Irish breads, English breads that do the very same thing. But when a French horse does it, we highlight it. Yeah. Ruby, do, has Frank and, and the training team got it right? Should Absolute Tire be favoured over Gallop and Champ? Absolute Tire should be favoured over Gallop and yeah. Champ, yeah. yeah. Sorry, it's the other way around. It's the other way around. Yeah. So I, I think Absolute Tire should be favoured. He has proved it. And I think there's some crack. I do agree as to the standard maybe of last year's Gold Cup. I, don't need the, I think the standard was quite high. I just think the way the race, the race developed and was run, I think it was a midland pace. It wasn't a real stamina contest. And the fastest horse absolutely bolted in and that was a Plutar and he was spectacular and if I was riding him trained him on him I would be gung ho for the Gold Cup again he was I think amazing but I think we had some really good novices not just Gallop and the Champ I think Lon Presse a high senior even Braves Man's Game I know we're recording this before the Charlie Hall and we'll see what happens there between Brave Man's Game and a high senior but I think the high senior and Lon Presse they are stayers they stay all day both like to be ridden forward, and I think for that reason, by March, you'll see a much different Gold Cup. Yeah, like if you're talking, Galvin Sean's pretty free going at the moment, or last we saw him, uh, Plutar, we know free going, Lampresse free going. It could be a real burn up though, couldn't it? If, uh, if they all, they all make it. I don't think so. Hi, Senor Lampresse. Lampresse is not free. He is, he's a strong galloper. Okay. He wants to, if I think if Charlie Deutsch is pulling out of Lampresse, he's just going too slow. Um, you know, I, I think they're. I think they've good horses, Frank. I think it'll be. I think that's a really strong division. People are wrapped up in Constitution Hill Honeysucker. I think the three miles stay in division this year. I think you've have some good novices oh, coming through. Yeah. Four yeah. fucked in there. You four or five really good ones. I think some great races. I think the King George would be a good race. The Savills would be a good race. Um, obviously, then you'll have the Cotswold Chase. Maybe that one might get a solo in, but I think it'll build all the way to March. I think that's that's a really strong division. Like like if you thought about it, right? Noble Yates is rated 158 after winning the Grand National, albeit he was pulled up in France. But in an ordinary year, him going from a novice into open company, you'd be very excited about him potentially being a Gold Cup horse. He's not even on the radar. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Um, like, you know, he, he, you'd be obviously having a brave man's game, a high senior and an presse ahead of him. Even Farouk Delaine was travelling like a dream when he tipped up two out. Um, in. It, it starts this Saturday and it's, it's just going to go for the year. You're going to have the Charlie Hall. The following Saturday, you're going to have the, the Chase in the North. You'll have Galvin, who was, you know, the Gold Cup wasn't going to suit him last year. He's already won in Punches Down. He'll probably he'll be, he'll be going there. And I think they're just going to, it's just going to rock for the winter, that division. I think it's really exciting. Ruby's very excited. Yeah, it looks, you know, it is. Because like, even excited. if you look at what won last year, like Frodo won the Grey One. Um, Frodo won the Great One in Down Royal. Royal yeah. um, you had Clannis Obo won the Great One in Aintree. Tornado Flyers Prize winning the King George. Like, there was no bar at Blue Tire. Like, there was nothing really. Hmm. Well, this year, I think, yeah, that's, I'd agree that's with That's what I mean. Can you, can you really, like, Frodo and Paul will have him right, right for the north. Yeah. If he gets his day there, that'll be his day. Like, I think Clannis Obo could struggle this year. Tornado the Flyers going to struggle this year. Ken Boy's going to struggle this year. He's had two runs trying to have him right for the north. I just think that album photo is gone. I think that that load of horses have passed through, but the bunch coming behind them look really strong, and I think it's a cracking division. It's really looking forward to it. Um, what's the latest, speaking of good novices, what's the latest on Monkfish, Ruby, as we record? Exactly what Willie said. Um, day by day I saw him on the gallop, not on the gallop, he, yeah, he was on the gallop yesterday morning, but it'll be really slow with him. And look, if you're being practical about a PK, he will, Willie says he doesn't think he'll get him to the track before Christmas. He won't. It'll be in the springtime or late winter, early spring, whatever that time of year is, when he gets him to the track. But when they're off that long, how many of them come back to the level they were at? Most of them come back a bit behind where they were at. And Monkfish probably had to improve from where he was to be at this level anyway. So you've, you've lost that 18 months of training, injury, it just... You know, I mean, probably better people have done more stats on it than I'm only yeah. thinking about experience, but not that many horses come back after that long a layoff that can achieve, get to the level they were at, let alone improve, like I think Monkfish has to. Yeah. And then, and then even you're talking about the Gold Cup, like if he's not going to get back till, you know, end of January, start of February, do you really want to 
run them then and maybe get them out in under six weeks for a Gold Cup off the back of an absence. I wouldn't be. No, no William Moore's a genius, but even the timeline on that is so yeah, it's, yeah. It's so tight. That's a winning a prayer job. You yeah. mentioned the novices, um, and this probably speaks to how good the novices are. What about, I was watching that Willie Mullins uh, stable tour on Sporting Life, and Willie Mullins brought out Capitano. And I thought, oh yeah, Capitano, I remember him. And he said, yeah, we're going to aim for the Gold Cup. I was like, interesting. I mean, he is obviously a great chaser, but uh, a great novice chaser, but I was like, I didn't think he'd be a Gold Cup horse, but that shows the strength and depth. Yeah, and look, he could possibly start in the Coral Gold Cup at Newbury, um, but you'd love him to have a run going there. Mm. When you look at, I look just thinking of horses I rode in it. I rode Alexander Banquet in it. He was fifth or sixth without a run. Jack Adam didn't win it without a run. We ended up in second to Cooney Green in the Gold Cup. Um, I, I just think where it is in the season with Willie's objective on the year, does it come a bit early for a horse that hasn't had a run first time out? I know he would win with so many horses first time out this year, but at that time of year, when you look at how long the season is, um, I'd like him to have a run. Yeah, so like, I, I, Willie Mullins is happy with Capitano running, staying on second, third in the in that the, the former Hennessy, the former Labrick Trophy, the now Carl Gold Cup. Obviously he wants to win it, but yeah, it's just so hard to win it. On, it on, it on. is, like, I don't know if he'd be staying on. If he gets tired, it'll be the opposite. Okay. He'd have looked the winner and faded out of it. Um, like Jack and Anne possibly did, he came back then and won the Tiestes off top weight mm. as a six-year-old before going to the Gold Cup. So, you know, I, I look when you're trying to find contests for them all, find races for them all, it would look the right place to start with him. I do think, though, were Lon Presse or a high senior, he's running the Charlie Hall, but yeah. were Lon Presse to go to that Coral Gold Cup first time up, I think with his mark, if he's going to be a Gold Cup horse, he's probably 12, 14 pounds by Linfrank. Yeah, I think, yeah, even though they're carrying, you know, big weights, they have the potential to be proper grade one. Yeah. He's 164. If he's the potential to get he up there to 172 or three, like, you definitely have... But if you're going to be a Gold Cup horse, you have to get to 178, 180. Yeah. So, like, that's what, that's what you're playing with. That's, what you, that's with the inflation and handicaps, year on year. Like, what was... 170 is now 180 nearly. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and that's trickling the whole way back down. So, 162... A 164, I think he is. Yeah. It's probably the equivalent of 157 or 8 six years ago. So, like, if he turns up in the Coral Chase, I, Coral, whatever that race is now. Cargo Cup. Coral Gold Cup. I think it, he's well in. The former whip red. Is that what we're calling it? Is? Capitano's only six, isn't he? Yeah. Like, again, yeah. it's not easy for six year olds in the same division as novices. And, um, you know, you obviously have Adam Forster, when I always kind of about improved mastery. Capitano's only seven, isn't he? Is he seven? Four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She says, I don't know. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. He's an older novice. No, no he's not a young novice, he Frank thinks he is. I think, yeah, I, maybe I'm wrong, he could be seven. He's um, 20 years. He's, he's, six he's one to watch out for in, in, in the race we used to know, it's the Hennessy, he six and, seven, and then yeah. the Ladbrokes, and now it's the, the Coral Gold Cup. Um, one other novice chaser I want to talk about is, sorry, not novice chaser, three-mile chaser, is Hewick. He's a kind of funny one to talk about for obvious reasons because we're not going to see him until we go cup. So what, what we're talking about now will stand. We can roll this out again in our Shelton preview in March. Is he a genuine contender, Frank? I, I think he has to be considering what, like, um, you know, it's easy enough to be a little bit dismissive of him. And when he won the Galway Plate, I was like, Jesus, that's a fair effort. And then he was like, oh, I'm going to go for the Kerry Nash. And you're like, God, you're yeah. going to be off America in the low to one, mid 160s. Like, if you win that, you're a Gold Cup horse, like, you know, thinking, Sharks a bit, you get carried away here, but I've no doubt he was going to win when he tipped up at the last. Oh, yeah. And, like, if you're going to win, the handicap will be bumping him up to 170. <laughs> and, like, straight away, he's in, he's in the picture for, you know, Gold Cup. Um, look, that race in America, that's just a nothing race, you know, in, in Not relation... Not the owners. <laughs> no, no, nothing race from a foreign perspective, yeah. from a financial perspective. Genius. It's an excellent race. Right touch, yeah. But, um... I'm purely on figures, he has to be a player because he's fast improving and he stays really well and yeah. Why not? That, yeah, he, but how, I wouldn't discount him anyway. Ruby, how difficult would it be to get a horse to win a Gold Cup having not run since October? I know I know, as part of our plan, but That's still. May half and did it since from December, didn't he? Yeah. Um, no, look, I mean, if the Shark thinks he, he, he's had plenty of runs, what does he do? Does he completely give him a break? Not time of year to put a horse out in the field, so he's not really going to give him a complete break. Does he just back off him for six to eight weeks and freshen him up and then train him? He won't 
lose a huge amount of fitness and then he'll build them back up. So, yeah, he could possibly do it. Um, but I think it's up another level again, a couple of levels to get to, to grade one standard, even from his crack and run in a Kerry National. Um, but I think, again, that's inflation in ratings. I, I just happened to look at it before the Kerry National. I won it on a top weight with 12 stone, you're a leader. He'd, but he'd rate of 133. He wouldn't have even got into this year's Kerry National. Do I think he's 30 pounds behind Hewick? Absolutely not. So I, I think you're, you are seeing now with ratings that you're getting way higher ratings in those handicaps. I, I he had a higher rating than Doran's Pride had when he won the Kerry National. Running Hewick had, than Doran's Pride had, who had been third in the World Cup. He had a higher rating for winning the Galway Plate than the horse who finished third to the Cup, than the Gold Cup. I don't know. A lot of inflated ratings chat here. Um, one for the one for the niche uh, handicap. Capadano is a six-year-old, so he'd be seven under in the Gold Cup, like Kicking King, War of Attrition, Best Mate, Kato Star, Album Four. That's the that's the age, isn't it? Seven. Yeah, to 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 win that the first the Gold that Cup. That was the point that this the improvement from six to seven can yeah. be quite okay. large. So Huge. I definitely wouldn't be Blue on the line for him. So Capadano could be one to watch. One more horse to mention before we go on to Novice Chasers is the winner of the Four Miler last year. Sorry. We're not, it's not the four miler three anymore. Mile six, the three mile sixer, lads. We can't keep calling it that. Yeah, that's... but it's like Nisha and Altior earlier. We all know what you meant, Pete. <laughs> Ruby Walsh on my side. Um, Ruby Stackler. Um, where can he go? We've talked about so many good three milers or three mile plus. Is he going to be thrown into that mix? I don't know. Look, I suppose Native River was placed in a national hunt chase and went to win a, a gold cup, not the following year, but the year after. Frank, you think of. Neil Arako won it and was second in the gold cup. All right. Back in John. Focus, I yeah. can't think Rod Vindham was a grand national horse. I, I, I'm not sure. Uh, can you win the national on chase and actually win a gold cup? Possibly. Could he be a grand national horse? Mm, if you yeah. were to I go that road I, after the gold cup on top, top weight maybe. I, I think maybe he's more of a grand national horse. He's a good second string for Ronnie Bartlett to have in the gold cup behind Galvin though. Yeah. That stat regarding national horses, national chase horses not winning the gold cup, you made a really good point last year when the previews. That race has changed so much that realistically horses wouldn't have been running in a Gold Cup no, having run of that up until only about 15 years ago anyway. Max, max 15 years ago. Yeah. So they changed the rule of it before like it was for a much lower class horse. Yeah. Now it's changed. Maidens or something like that, yeah, like at one stage. It had to be a maiden, yeah, at the yeah. start of the season. Yeah. Um, but look, anyway. Okay, we'll keep an eye on Sattler. He could be a Grand National horse if, if yeah, not. Yeah, I if, think he's more a Grand National yeah. horse to be well, I'd have him. Tricky one to get a mark for, but sure, look, that's, that's Willie Mullins in the race planner's job. Novice Chasers, lads. Let's talk about Novice Chasers. This, I appreciate this is difficult, uh, pun intended, because we haven't seen any of these horses over fences, or at least the majority of the ones we're going to talk about. Appreciate it. Uh, going to start with him and Sir Gerhard. They both won point to points, Ruby, so we automatically, as race fans, go, right, that's going to be over fences. That's the plan. I'd imagine it is, but appreciate it. Um, I'd say it's still 50-50 with Sir Gerhard, and depending on the more schooling he does, but... Um, appreciated had one run last season in the champion hurdle that was going to be a big ask wasn't it and mm. he didn't come up with it but he will go chasing definitely uh, Sir Gerhard I, I'd say it's 50-50 when you look at it Willie's going to have to try and find the champion hurdle or somewhere he will obviously have Vauban four eyes and five but you know how hard that is mm. so what do you do then you've Sir Gerhard Stateman El Fabiolo and uh, appreciated so uh, I'd imagine one of those four will stay back hurdling. Uh, which one it is, I don't know. I think appreciated and El Fabiolo, they'll definitely go chasing. And I think it's between Stateman and Sir Gerhard as to which one stays hurdling and which one goes chasing. And yeah. that, that, Sorry, Frank. And Is that found out at home or is that found out on the race course in, in, uh, in mean, general? In, in general, at home, okay. schooling, you'll see how they go. And look, Paul Talman will have a huge say which one he thinks after schooling them is the more natural chase or the more enthusiastic one. Um, you know which one he thinks might have the potential to step drop back to that hurdle, stay in that champion, or try and get into that champion mm. hurdle division even. But um, I'd imagine of those four, three will go chase and a woman stay hurdle. And we don't know yet which one. Well, I don't. It, uh, between Sir Gerhard and Statement, I, I Fabiola appreciate it. They'll definitely go chase. Okay. Will Dyser Dynamo go chase? He'll go chasing too. Yeah. What happened? Know. What happened to him last season? At the, the, uh, punch time, it was clinically abnormal. I think was the official. He <laughs> said so he hadn't gotten over <laughs> it, was a, it, it was a bad fall too, wasn't it? Like, yeah, geez, it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but he was still going all right. Look, there's no way he would have won, but he was still yeah. going all right. To be fair to him, and I thought that, like, even I thought watching the race, they were going too hard. I don't. Um, know. And yeah, I, I think he would have ran a credible race anyway. Like, um, he's that one I'd I'd forget about. 
he definitely has an engine and just the way he goes out the front and if he can jump. You've always been a big yeah, fan. Yeah, you wouldn't be surprised if he turned well, into I, an alcohol. Jason, I, I'd agree with Frank. You're, you're looking at Dysart Dynamo. I keep getting them mixed up. Not Diamond. Uh, or Diamond. <laughs> um, but uh, as a chaser, I mean, there's 13 fences in the Arkle. There's only eight hurdles in the Supreme. If you're a good jumper, two mile chasers, front running two mile chasers find it easier than two, front running two mile hurdlers. It's definitely more down to jumping faster horses. The hurdle races are more stamina. Hmm, that's like, good. like even if like I, I don't know what price Dice or Dynamo is for an Arkle, but you know, relative to the price of Jam John Bon. Jambon, I was really going to Jambon, call it. I wouldn't mind it. Um, and a cup of coffee. Like, you know, at the time, like, would you have said Jambon would definitely have beaten Dice or Time when he came down? Mm. I'm not sure. Um, it, it's not definite, so. Look, it's just one. He is an engine, and I, I always liked him. I forgive him, Punchstone. He has, as I said, a nasty fall at Cheltenham, so. Um, Nicky, maybe Nick, one to keep an eye on. Nicky might run Jambon, Jambon and Fish Cake in the same race next season. Isn't <laughs> All right, um, <laughs> of the horses we have mentioned, uh, Gordon Elliott. a tasty race. <laughs> oh, it's awful. Um, Gordon <laughs> Elliott's novice chasers, right? <laughs> Three Stripe Life and Mighty Potter are a couple that uh, that have been flagged up potentially to go chasing. Yeah, look, Mighty Potter's horse I really like. Um, I think he's um, got plenty of ability. He's rated French Dynamite, uh, who's a 147 rated chaser. Um, real right catcher in the Royal Bond. Um, look, he looked to be going nowhere and then stayed on really strongly. Came out, won the future champions, novice hurdle at Cheltenham, or at Leopardstown and, um, over Christmas, beating Three Stripe Life. Um, I thought he was uh, you know, nailed on to kind of hit the frame in the Supreme and he was pulled up after making a terrible mistake. Came back and kind of... Um, he, he won the grade one at Punchstown, but the race did fall apart. Obviously, Dice of Dynamo was pulled yeah. up, uh, and Sir Gary was below form. Punchstown might not just be his track. Look, it was probably turned out to be weak enough for Newell, but he's a horse that I felt was always going to make a better chaser. Um, so I'd definitely be keen. Be keen to see what he does this year. I think I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up stepping up to two and a half miles either. Um, well, Three Stripe Life, he was running up the back of Sir Gerhard, um, got his grade one in Aintree. Um, he has plenty of ability as well, but I just think there's a bit more in Mighty Potter. Okay. He'd be the one I prefer of the two, but still wouldn't be my favourite Gordon Novice Chaser. All right, we might get to that because uh, I've got a question regarding um, regarding what's what's your free bet for Cheltenham mm -hmm. and Novice Chasers. Uh, we do have a question from Tom Robinson on Twitter, Ruby. This one for you. Um, going back to your thoughts of those four horses, three potentially going chasing, El Fabiolo suggesting maybe he might be the one to go chasing. What would you consider if he did be his likely targets? Two miles, you would you, you would have thought. I mean, you, you, there's four horses, so you, you, you think, right, where did they go? Beginner's chase, somewhere in November, mid to late November, and that leaves you then heading to Christmas. So, to take the two of them. I mean, if you're going to split El Fabiolo, Dysart Dynamo, which one of them goes to Leopardstown, which one of them goes to Limerick, um, you know, they have the Kalini early in, in January in Punchestown, so that kind of race. El Fabiolo... He looked quick enough at entry to me to be a two-miler. Dysar Dynamo looks a pure two-miler the way he jumps and gallops. Appreciated as he opened to go up a little bit in trip. Probably is. He could go out to two and a half looking at him. I know he was a brilliant winner of the, of the Supreme, but he's a bit older now. Um, I could see him stepping out, going out a little bit in trip. Um, you'd also have Manila Cocooner. You know, so there's just plenty of horses there. They'll have to go and win, and a lot of PK will depend on how they jump. Like, to me, uh, people watched... Galloping the Champier last year, Neppertown winning at Christmas and automatically jumped into the RSA because he'd won a three mile novice hurdle at Punchestown. But when you watched Galloping the Sean jumping here, to me it screamed two and a half miles. Mm. His speed, it's direct through the air from takeoff to land and the ground he was getting, to me there was no way he'd need to go up and trip at him. And those horses would all be the same. It's which ones attack their fences, who gets ground in the air, who's, le who's losing a bit of ground, who needs a bit more time. The further you go, the more time you have to jump. The shorter you're going, the faster you need it to be. So those horses will all tell you. And if you watch them yourselves, and racing is about forming your own opinion and watching what's happening in front of you. And you, know, you watch them as, as beginners chasers and it'll give you an idea where Willie Mullins will be thinking about the next step. Yeah. Like what's interesting about El Fabiola is like the level you ran to the entry off the back of just the one run. Yeah. Um, look, you probably have to factor in John, John Bon had a hard race to tell him. Mad for John Bon here. Fairly hungry, yeah. <laughs> Love John Bon and Luke's at sport. Um, but like John Bon's probably run a little bit below himself because he had such a hard Fizzy race. Fizzy won the flat one. 
Oh, the flat one. Oh Great. no, I like the I like the oh. red one, fizzy oh. red one. That's not sport. Oh, that's that's just normal Lucas. Hangover Lucas. Yeah, that one. That's sick Lucas. Yeah, like hangover Lucas. Yeah, yeah, that one. I like that one. Sorry, um, go on anyway. Jambon. Jambon probably was below. Like you know, he's had such a hard race in the Supreme. I reckon he might have been slightly below mm. his best. But at the same time, Man Fabiola's run to an incredible level for just the second start uh, over hurdles, and he's got loads of ability as well. He's very exciting, and yeah, I just think, like I know Nicky's building up John Bond, but there's a lot of good novices in there that I don't think he's that far clear of. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be automatically thinking, you know, I've heard some people say John Bond just wins the Arkham. I wouldn't be thinking. Really? No. Okay. And um, if I gave you a free bet on a chaser, novice chaser for next year's Cheltenham Festival. Ruby Walsh, you have free bet, off you go. Free bet. Um, to win a novice chase at Cheltenham. I'd be with Frank here. I had Fabiano on the Arca. Oh, lovely, he's named the race as well, lovely. Frank? Yeah, I, I like I like him, but the one I'm, I can't wait to see jump events um, is Jory Kalam. Um, cost 240,000 pounds after winning his point to point. Um, won two bumpers. Won two hurdle races. Um, the second hurdle race, his first time stepped up to just shy of three miles. Uh, on the face of it, it looked sort of uh, workmanlike and not that impressive, but like it was yielding ground around Torres to be sharp enough. Like, I don't think that kind of track would suit him. More galloping track would suit him better. Um, but he did beat uh, Ida's boy, who was an impressive winner of a beginner's chase at Cork recently. Third was Ch- Churchstone Warrior, who was just touched off in a grade. Uh, two I think in his next start uh, and the fourth the gaffer won a grade three hurdle on his next start so that form actually worked out well and he was workman like in at conditions that wouldn't really suit and I just think he's um brown advisory novice chase written all over him I um, mean that's a great title we love it the brown advisory yeah it just rolls off the tongue like the RSA doesn't it <laughs> watch out for Jerry Colomb- Columbi and um, one question another question from Twitter from Chris Jelf this one for you Frank and we are in danger of talking too much Cheltenham in a National Hunt season preview so give us a couple of anti-post bets I know you've had a look um, ahead of this but that will actually hopefully collect before the year's out um, I'm going to go look I'm not saying back them now, but I'd say like if you kind of get to a week or two out and they're entered and it looks like they're, they're on, the two I have are the Galloping Bear for the Welsh Grand National. Um, I love that horse. And he won that I race at Linfield. He won he, the uh... Sussex National. So uh, he, he'd he been hunter chasing, won a good one at Fontwell. I think he beat Somatigal and a couple of more decent horses as well. Just relishes heavy ground, stays all day. Um, had a run over hurdles last year at Chepstow. I think that initially was the prepping for the Welsh hurdle, but he took a fall. And I think he missed, well, missed the Welsh National as a result, I think um, that was the reason. And went to Sussex National, won off, I think a mark of 135. Stepped up and tripped them to th- or it was three and a half miles again at Haylock on heavy ground. Uh, and he won the Grand National trial, beating Bristol Demoy. Outstayed him. Like We all know how good Bristol Demoy is in heavy ground around Haylock. Um, he's completely unexposed, even though he's a nine-year-old. He's just screams bog in Welsh National, Chepstow on the 27th, he looks ideal for it. And look, I'd imagine uh, when the race is priced up, he will be near the head of the market, but he deserves to be. He mm. looks tailor-made. And the other one's very left field, and he might not even end up being aimed at this race with Panda Boy for the Paddy Power Chase here at Leppistown on the 27th. Um, he won the Pretense Qualifier at Christmas here, beating Winter Fog. That looked a good race. Winter Fog was obviously very well handicapped, and he won well. But I really like the way he won his beginner's chase at Punchtown at the end of May. They put him away since so they might campaign him uh, as a graded chaser. He's only six, um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him maybe taking a graded chase and maybe get beaten and then get a fair enough handicap mark and aim at a decent handicap. You saw what Martin Brazel did with Longhouse Port winning the um, Tiestas last year. Of course, go back, he won the Tiestas in the Grand National with number six Valverde. He's a very good trainer. He nearly won the Carl Cup with Faster Slow last year, who um, had two moderate runs heading into it. Mm. He's obviously won the Ballymore with City Oil and he's a trainer and knows what he's doing. And Panda Boy is definitely one I have my mind for a good handicap this year. That's and that was just the race that, the fact that he'd won at Leperstown last Christmas in a handicap, that was the race that I kind of jumped out of my mind. See in JP Silks? No? No, oh, no. The, he's kind of Paddy grey. Paddy only ever won by JP horses. So. I don't know right, what, who owns them, but they're kind of grey colours. Okay, okay. All right, Panda Boy for the Paddy Pear Chase. Once priced, keep well, an eye out for it. If he's entered, he, yeah. he might not be entered, yeah. but he's just like, you know, you're trying to find things that are a bit left field and not yeah. overly obvious. They're not qualified yet. They're all entered. Yeah, he'll need to run again, but I mean... Yeah, twice you know, more, won't he? Uh, will he get a mark because he's won already? 
Yeah, it doesn't matter getting the mark. He, he has, has to, to run. Three. He has to run. But that's three to say times. he might run twice and like, have to run twice. To he even could run. For you know, finish fourth or fifth in a couple of graded chances and get a get a mark. Handy mark. One to keep an eye on for it's regardless. Just one, so even if he doesn't, one, I yeah. think yeah, I think he's one to keep an eye on for a good handicap chase yeah. anyway. But if he were to end up entered in the Paddy Power chase, I'd be very very interested in him. Okay, and again, not focusing on Shelton too much. Um, Ruby, if I was to ask one for the Grand National <laughs> in October, <laughs> we did mention Stafford. We did. But I mean, if you were sitting here last year, like, and gave me <laughs> no <40 laughs> guess, would I have picked Noble, Noble Yates? I don't know, would you? I wouldn't have. And okay. he'd, run, he'd actually won a beginner's chase at Galway three yeah. weeks ago. He did. But still, would I have even thought of him, considered him? I definitely wasn't as forward thinking as, as Paul Brown and Emmett Mullins. There's no. no way I could have foreseen that. But if we're looking for Grand National Horses, I think there's a big race in Velvet Elvis. Okay. Um, yeah. I think he was disappointed in the Munster National, but. It was his first run of the season. I think he could Wh- be alright. When's the try town? Three weeks, is it? A little bit more, four I, weeks. I was a little bit worried pricing up the Monster National that it was just to get him spot on for that. It looked Because he was he very, very good at Nate Navin yeah. last yeah. year, winning that good Navin's handicap. He's a big race. Velvet Elvis. So Velvet Elvis. Okay. I'd could agree with you. Yeah. Big um, handicap at him. And I think French Dynamite will be in a big handicap chase as well. I have. Uh, look, it's a long way off, and the Grand National's hard enough to pick the winner Not the Grand National. He could win the Paddy Power in November. Which one? French Dynamite? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, one for the Grand National potentially. Actually ran last week at Kelso, and you might laugh at me. Sounds Russian for uh, Ruth Jefferson. Uh, again, coming from left field. Uh, I think the plan now is to go to the many clouds with him. He's only a seven year old, only made his debut of May last year, so he's relatively, you know, um, lightly raced, unexposed. Uh, didn't win in three starts over hurdles, but. Uh, he was beaten on his chase debut, but since then he's won four of his five starts. His only defeat was beaten half length by Dusart. He was only receiving two pounds that day. Dusart's, I think, favourite for the Carl Gold Cup at Newbury. Um, Sounds Russian ran in um, the Edinburgh Gin Handicap at Kelso last weekend and cruised through the race. After very, very, very impressive winner. And he beat I Wright, who we know is a very consistent handicapper. Like he's been placed in a I think it was a Ladsbrook's Trophy handicap it was called then. Um, placed in the Ultima, placed in, was he placed in um, the rehearsal chain? Like there was loads of handicaps he's been placed in. Um, so I think that sounds Russian, a seven-year-old who, he run the many clouds. I'm not sure he might, he's a great horse, but I think, you know, if he got into the Grand National, he'd be interesting. Okay, sounds Russian, I'm keep an eye I'm going to do a Frank on it as well, but I think French Dynamite's run at Punchestown. Albaro won it, he's now out at 153. Yeah. Bustleton won the Kerry National since, French Dynamite was third, Fan the Blues has won a couple since, and Gabby's Cross won the Blazer was back in fifth. I think that run right there in that novice handicap chase in Punchestown. Alright. Gives French Dynamite a massive chance in a Paddy Power or something like something that. Something like that. And just to have a couple of handicappers, one, yeah, they're probably relatively obvious, but Cork Rambler, very keen on him last year, every day bar the Ultima. Absolutely got him. Oh dear. He was very impressive. Oh dear, Frank. He was very impressive in the Ultima. Um, look, I think any big staying handicap chase is going to be suitable for him, whether it be the Ladbrook, whatever, the Carl Gold Cup at Newbury. Um, you know, if they ran him in a beacher chase, the Grand National, all of them, he's going to probably win another good handicap this year. And the other is Pat's Fancy. Um, look, he was well beaten in the National Hunt chase, but if you go back. Yeah, you were sweeping him, weren't you? Uh, not so. I thought he had a chance. I wasn't mad at him. I'd be more interested in him now for the uh, Welsh Grand National Trial at Chepstow. At this, the is, this is a proper national season preview now. Well, like, we're we're, we're giving out tips for the Welsh but, National. Welsh, but I'll tell, Welsh you my, but I'll tell you my reasoning. Like, look, everyone can be tipping up stuff for Gold Cups and whatever, but like, um, he won but twice at Chepstow. The English will probably win the Welsh National Trial. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but they won't win the actual won in that one. But, like, <laughs> if you look at it, right, he won at Chepstow last year, both over just shy of three miles. He beat Jericho Rock half a length off mark of 125. Jericho Rock placed the classic chase, second in the Ultima. Uh, he was 15 pounds higher when he was second in the Ultima. He then slammed Imperial Alcazar off a £10 higher mark uh, at Chepstow again. Um, Imperial Alcazar then won the Cheltenham Handicap on Trials Day in his next start and was second in the plate of a £7 higher mark. So the form all adds up. He just loves Chepstow. The Trials Day, I think it's, is it three miles or two miles, seven and a half furlongs, Chepstow? We'll call it three. And he's going to be off a mark of 142, which is £7 higher than the rating he hammered Imperial Alcazar off. Just again, if he gets the Welsh Trials... Uh, the Welsh National Trial. 
but won't win the actual race itself. The Welsh no, National. no, he might, might place Bear. behind the Galvin Bear. Bear. Okay, he did forecast for that anyway, yeah. So, <laughs> so that was Pat's fancy, wasn't it? Pat's fancy. Pat's fancy. Here, was for, the, for the Welsh <laughs> National Try. Trial. It, that's what I have in my mind from you. Fair play to you. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and get your thoughts on the um, the Porterstown handicap chase, maybe, or the or the Punchstown Grand National Trial as well, the big races. <laughs> over. Um, we, we'll be back and take a very quick break. Back with the hurdlers. Plenty to talk about and what could be a champion hurdle for the ages. Betting can add a little excitement to any sporting event. But only if it's done safely, responsibly and within our means. Never gamble when angry or feeling low. Set yourself a limit for time, money or both. No matter what the problem is, gambling is never. Is never. It's never the answer. There is always someone to talk to when you feel gambling is becoming a stress. Check out responsiblegaming.paddypower.com Oh, welcome back. We have gone through the chasers. It's now time to talk about the hurdlers ahead of this national hunt season uh, here on the From the Horse Mouth podcast. Now, Frank Hickey, let's go straight to the big one. Honeysuckle against Constitution Hill. We were those talk. We nearly had it last season, didn't we? Um, which of the two were you most impressed with at Cheltenham? That's what my notes say, but I'm pretty sure I know the answer. It has to be Constitution Hill. Uh, it was breathtaking. And the clock as well backs it up. Uh, he won in three minutes, 44 seconds. 44.35 seconds carrying 11 stone 7 thank you for the point three five. That was she won in 350.13 so just under 7 seconds faster carrying 4 pounds more um, obviously she would have the 7 pound allowance um, so it was a massive performance on the clock massive uh, performance visually his form stacks up as well his hurls debut when he beat Mighty at Sandown uh, comprehensively Mighty has come out and come second in the grade one over two and a half miles at Aintree. Um, John Bond, who was second in Supreme, has come out and won a grade one at Aintree. The form just stacks up. He's rated 170. The mare's rated 165. She'll have the seven pound allowance. So if you're looking at the ratings, it's saying he only has two pounds to find and he's only after three runs over hurdles. Mm. He's every chance of improving again. Um, He's a tremendously exciting horse. Oh, God, yeah. I can't wait. We all can't wait to see him again. Um, he is favoured again. We talked about this with the Galvin de Champ at We have the form in the book versus the potential. So, again, potential being the favourite uh, over the form in the book with Honeysuckle. Unbeaten, 16 starts, dual champion hurdle winner. And she's likely, isn't she, to be unbeaten again going to the terminal? Or, or is she? Oh, she is. I would yeah. think she'll go to Ferry House first time uh, for the Hatton's Grace, probably come here. At the Dublin Racing Festival for the Irish Champion Hurdle, she'll only have two runs prior to Cheltenham in March. What's he going to have? Probably two as well. Um, I third? think they're going to go to the Carl Hurdle at Ascot. Carl Hurdle at Ascot, and then leave Christmas the Christmas Hurdle. Maybe will you take on Epitant there? Or will that be left for her? Uh, it's hard to be. figure out where he where where he's going to go, what yeah. he's going to do. I think Michael Buckley was on a podcast recently and he, he laid out those races as a potential. I think they threw in the contenders hurdle as a potential runner as well. That's where Nicky likes to just yeah. you know, team for a really hard race yeah. where they're 1-20 to 20 against <laughs> two other horses. The more battle of Kelso <laughs> <laughs> through <laughs> sense. I can remember. Was Zaynar, it Zaynar, 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 wasn't it being a 1-16 or something in that well, race? Yeah, something like remember. that. But yeah, he, he, he's going to have two egg and spoons, isn't he? I mean, he's, he's going to be 1-10 to 10 in his two races. There's nothing in the UK, really, yeah. is there? Um, the only thing I would say about Honeysuckle, if Sir Gerhard did stay over hurdles, um, yeah, he, he'd be interesting with you, wouldn't he? Like, I know he has to improve, yeah, but I mean, he, he has his improve, form yeah. is relatively solid, and I would just forgive the, the punch to run. Uh, he didn't act there. Like, he didn't perform to his best there in, in a bumper either. Um, his Leprestown form and Cheltenham form looks fairly solid, so yeah. it'd be interesting. At least it'd give you a, a new form line um, up against Honeysuckle and um, yeah he'd be one that'd be interesting against her right? Ruby when Willie Mullins and yourself are sitting down on Saturday afternoon watching one to seven shots win grade two hurdles over in the UK does he ever turn to you and say I should have sent for example State Man over there or Sir Gerhard or because do, he doesn't seem to send a huge amount of his two milers over for no, whatever reason No we did in the past Any Power Faheen Boat won that Coral Hurl at Ascot where um Constitution Hill is going to start. Well, he um, won a Christmas hurdle as well, didn't he? He won a couple of Christmas hurdles, yeah. so he did. Um, the Bula, or the International, is the other one that's worth a few quid, so maybe you'd send one there, but why would you go for to Sandown for the Condendus hurdle? It's not even a good pot. It's, it's a 20 grand race. It's worth less than the Red Mills hurdle. If you want to give one a run at that time of year, you go there. 
Um, so, no, and like I suppose Emmett did send the horse for the Moor battle, but that's a handicap now. Yeah, they've it's changed not a condition race yeah. anymore, isn't it? I, I see that was because um, there was a bonus. a bonus. Yeah, and he won the handicap chase then, so that was good placing sure. as well. But the shunter is right. Um, but look, the the this where are they going to go? I mean, Constitution Hill. Yeah, he, he he won a really good Supreme in a really good time, but a race that ultimately fell apart, I think. Um, now, he maintained it and kept it going, but John Bond and Dysart Dynamo took each other on, um, and he just sat behind them, let them at it, and uh, kept it up, and they fell apart. She's won a, the champion hurdle. I think her time was a good bit slower, because I think it was a slower race all the way. It was slower at every part, um, including the finish, and you've no doubt about her stamina. I'd say... If they got into a champion hurdle where they went as hard as they went in this year's Supreme, I think it would suit Honeysuckle down to the ground yeah. as well. Um, so I, I think it's a, I think it's a strong division. I think it'll be a really good division, but I do think both will need to go through the season unblemished to to, to make it the race people want it to be. Which is pretty likely, I'd say. Um, just when you say go, going back to Constitution Hills Supreme, the race fell apart to to anyone listening or watching. Um, they're probably screaming like I was internally saying, yeah, but he made the race fall apart. Is that not the case where he was just so good that the others just fell by the wayside or was it more a case of this just happened around him? Well, I think it happened around him. I think from the before they got to the fourth last hurdle, as you're starting to climb the hill, uh, John Bond went that, they sat dynamo and they quickened up onto the hill. Um, he let them at it. So if you go faster up the hill, it takes a lot of energy so when they turned to descend and they needed to get a lung full of air he'd already gotten it arrived up on their outside didn't give them the opportunity to catch their breath and put the rest to bed there and then but um, he's a very good horse but I'm not going away from her I yeah. think she's outstanding okay right very much in the honeysuckle camp Frank you're probably in the Constitution Hill camp yeah yeah is that fair to say yeah we need to talk about Vauban uh, because he was a very impressive juvenile hurdler last year. Ruby, I suppose, to anyone newish to the game, why is it so difficult for juvenile hurdlers, the top of the tree juvenile hurdlers, to make it into open company the following season? I don't have an exact answer, but very few do it. So obviously it's quite difficult. Um, he did win a slowly run triumph. Frank, would that be fair to say? It wasn't yeah. cutthroat. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what the section was, I don't arrived, think it was. Yeah. No, a lot of them arrived on, on the steel, turning in Pied Piper, uh, Field Door, Vauban. There was three of them all on the bridle heading to the last hurdle and he was the fastest horse, made a mistake and still quick in the wind. He's a very good horse, but not tradition, wrong word. Experience, not experience, not the right word either. I think year I, in, year I, out, yeah. one every seven years or eight years. A five-year-old wins the champion hurdle? Um, well, Catchett won the triumph and the champion hurdle, and then Espor Dallin didn't, didn't make the triumph, didn't. and he came back and won the champion hurdle. But That's I right. think there was seven years between those. I think it had been seven Before years that, prior yeah. to Catchett as well. Um, and so I think it's only been two since the mid-80s or something. Is there three? Three. Oh, three. Uh, it, it's so not I, I, I have... It's kind of tying on what Ruby was saying earlier. That I just think it's uh, inflated ratings, and... The winner of the Triumph Hurdle has started to get ratings in the low one mid fifties when I don't think any of them are actually running to anywhere near that sort of mark. Um, generally, I would think most are actually more like mid one forties horses. And like you go back to even last year, Adagio was second in the Triumph. He got a mark I think of one hundred and forty seven and was second in the Great Wood. Now was a fantastic run, but he still couldn't win a Great Wood off you know one four seven. So like you're talking about, then what do you need to be to win a Champion Hurdler? Mid to high one sixties at least. It's so like twenty, like in my eyes, they have twenty-five to thirty pounds to find. That's the reason they can't. That very few of them do it. It's age too. I mean, yeah. I know a lot of them would be ex-flat horses. So you're saying they should be mature and peaking, but they're really against horses. Flat horses' careers end so early. Do we ever see the full potential of them? Who's to say that they wouldn't improve all the way to five or even six? They're gone to stud, so we don't know. Um, and I know with, with, with entire horses, that can be difficult to keep them going forward and improving. Um, but the majority of these are Geldens, bar Brazil. He's still a full horse, isn't he? See, fair play to him. He, he was, was in yeah. the master. Yeah, I think he, he was in Tipperary too. Um, 
but look, yeah, Vauban, even Stateman, Sir Gerhard, I think they have a good way to go to get up to, to Honeysuckle's level and Frank already has Constitution Hill ahead of her. Yeah, well, that, I stole Steve's question, by the way, regarding Vauban. That was uh, Steve who had a question for uh, regarding Vauban and the Triumph Hurdle. Just going back to Vauban the horse, though, we didn't talk a huge amount about him. Um, how does he rank then, Ruby, in terms of proper you know, juvenile hurdlers to go into the open company at Willie's Yard? Was he as impressive a winner of the Triumph as our Connor? No. No, but no, no. I, can you name yeah, a more never, impressive winner of look, the Triumph? He, he, yeah. ultimately well, fell, he ultimately fell at Cheltenham, but... Mm. and. Um, got injured or got killed unfortunately but when you look back at him here he was well beaten by jet skin hurricane fly he got closer in the at christmas got closer in the champion hurdle but he hadn't won an open company prior to the champion hurdle and he was a more impressive triumph winner he than, won he was getting there with every race he was getting he there but like yeah. that's only time he was catching up with every run like, so yeah. Vauban's probably going to be the same catching up with every run and i don't know maybe people will say Jet ski, hurricane fly, they were better than Constitution Hill and Honeysuckle, but brave person to say that. Mm. Like the only other impressive, well, would have been impressive, um, Triumph Hurdle winner would have been Gotten. He was going to bolt up and, you know. Didn't quite work out, did it? It hasn't worked out, no. 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 no maybe, fe maybe fences will be the making. <laughs> Who knows? Um, if Vauban then just, we can map out a path for him, Ruby, given he is that second season novice sort of thing. It, it, that, does that race at Down Royal, is that the obvious one for him, or is he...? No, I wouldn't think he'd be ready for that. That's okay. next weekend. Maybe the Fishery Lane and Nace the following weekend might be a good place. Yeah. Um, so keep it as lo as far back as possible, stepping into that open company and then... You don't have to. Like, you yeah. can, he can still run and fire all only hurdle races, so you, you want to try and let him develop as much as you can before you you put him in against the, the real good ones. Um, so, look, possibly the, the, the fishery lane, and then, you know, that's early November. What have you got in early December? Will he go to the international? Does he come here at Christmas? Something like that. The opportunities will get tight for him after that. He'll have to step into open, more open company. I'd imagine the last four year old only hurdlers he can run in is the fishery lane. Okay, and then we'll see what he's made of. But as you said, with our Connor, don't be surprised if it's progression over the course of the season for Vauban yeah. rather than he has to make it straight away. No, I think progression with, with a four-year-old rising five. Okay. Give him so a chance. Keep an eye on that. Uh, State man, Ruby, the handicap snip of last season's uh, Cheltenham. Um, one assumes, we all kind of assume, that he's now he is a grade one hurdler or at least grade well, two or grade above. Grade one a punch, yeah, in the so after. he's going to go into open company now. He, again, it's between himself and Sir Gerhard. Will they... I, I think one or other will stay hurdling, one will go chasing, possibly both could stay hurdling. Um, but he hasn't finalised that decision yet, so uh, time will tell. I'd imagine one or the other would go to the Morgiana. I think if you could, you'd be going there rather than taking on Honeysuckle in the, in the, Royal, in the, Hat, in the Hatton's Grace. So um, Morgiana, maybe the International. Um, you've got Christmas then, there's one race in Kempton, one race in Leperstown. Where do you go, uh, or which one do you want to? Who do you want to avoid? So, look, because they all have current grade one winning form and current prize money won. There's a lot of hurdle races that are leaving the race in Punchestown New Year's Eve. They won't be qualified for those kind of races, so um, they'll be few and far between where they can go. I, 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 Willie doesn't normally start anything in the Liz Mullen, so I, that's two and a half miles. I couldn't see any of them being ready for that, but. Um, Look, if the two of them stay, you'd imagine one would run in the Liz, one would run in the Hatton's Grace, one in the in the in the Morgiana. Be interesting. Were you there when at the yard when the handicap mark for State Man was revealed um, ahead of the the county? Was there celebrations before two I, weeks before? I think it was. Do you know that video of the bar when the screen and everyone starts throwing it? I think that was the scene from. <laughs> Yeah, it everyone one. throws pints up at the bar. <laughs> yeah, well that's done. Lovely. There's our there's our winner anyway. <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, Could you say that as if like, as it, as it was like like as if we gave him the mark? No, no, no. Just the we reaction. Didn't I give him the, the, the reaction of when you saw the mark that was given to him, and it was like, okay, there's our first winner. That is a very fair we mark. Didn't. We did what we always do. We moaned about the fifteen we thought were wrong. <laughs> Uh, yeah, state man indeed. Can I, can I, can I just mention one? Look, you can first mention, champion you, you hurdler. Can mention one, yeah. I don't think Bob Andrews is a staying hurdler myself. Um, like or chaser. Look, they're dropping him back over hurdles, and he's going to start off in the Lismore, I think, isn't he? Against Florian Porter. Um, be interesting race, but 
you know, as a novice hurdler, it was his turn of foot he was winning races, I thought. Um, and just, like, if you look back through history, Ballymore horses are, were more likely to make up into champion hurdle horses than supreme horses. And just nothing about him really screams, you know, real dour stare. Like, even when he beat Capadano that day in Punchestown, he looked at a spot of butter, and I don't think he outstayed him. He just kicked into another gear and, you know, took off. And I just think dropping back to two, I know they have honeysuckle already, but to my eye anyway, he'd look more worth a chance at two miles than... So um, Rachel Blackmore's loving you. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's in their different horns as well. Like, if you're looking at, um, you know... Oh, the more what, reason I say she's really loving yeah. you. I mean, <laughs> how would you even say that? But like, when you're looking, like, you're looking at the, what's best for the horse, is he an out and out stare? Not to me anyway, I don't think so. Um, yeah, he's a bit of a puzzle now, I would just anyway. be worried that you try, you know, if he's not a real three-miler and you try and make him into one, do you kind of lose the horse completely? That would be my worry. Um, I'm trying I think, to think of a, a scenario where he ends up in a two-mile hurdle is, is probably would be my concern. Like, is he, he's, he's hardly going to look a non-stayer in the Liz Mullen, is he? No, oh, so then he's going to come here at Christmas, yeah. you would think. And then he looks a non-stayer here. What do you do then? Drop him back to the Irish Champion Hurdle, drop him back to the Red Mills. Mm. Probably the Red, Red Mills. Red Mills, maybe, yeah. 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 And then you know where you're going. Do you head to entry for the two and a half? Th time that, that is the other option, yeah. is entry. But yeah, to my mind, just doesn't... He if you got your way, Frank, and had a fifth day at the festival, you could have had a two and a half mile hurdle. Oh, fifth day at the festival. Three days at the festival. Yeah, three days, the festival, yeah, three having... days exactly, yeah. Don't Back to the final days. days. Uh, speaking of three milers then, let's look at the three mile division. Um, if we're talking about Bob Ollinger, potentially going into the three mile hurdling division, we're talking about Florian Porter. Is it a probably a bit of a weak division of the three mile staying hurdlers? Does it always look weak though at the start of the year? Maybe. Again, like how many horses do you set out? To, like the staying hurdle division might be a bit harsh to say, is it just horses that were bought to be gold cup horses who can't jump? It's the madhouse. That's what it is. Do you know what Recently, I mean? anyway. Um, yeah, and that's what I'm saying, it's not a good division, but I don't think like you look at it at the start of the year and, and you're overly excited any year, but there'll be one or two pop up that maybe mightn't take the chasing and yeah, it's one that could be um, very interesting. I think, look, four in Prohurst, only going to be eight, isn't he, next year? Mm. He's going for a hat-trick. Um, you put him in the same breath then as Inga Streaver and he'd be looking at big bucks. Um, Inga Streaver's one of my favourite horses ever. Um, you have to give it to him, he's been very good in winning two stairs hurdles and He's definitely the one to beat. I mean, history does tell you this race, you find repeat winners. I mean, that is probably more so, than, I'm off the top of my head, more so than any other championship races. Yeah, and because again, there's probably not that much depth in maybe that division either, but um, age isn't an issue as well. Like, you know, if they win it young, they can keep going. Um, so, as I said, age, they, he, could, he could win another two of them. What about Classical Dream? Um, he has beaten Florian Porter. In he the has last. beaten Florian Porter. Look, Punchtown might be his gig. Um, I was just reading Willie's stable tour, and he did say that Ronnie McGorm is a massive mistake. He thought it was like an easy part, to an easy race to pick up on the route to Cheltenham, and probably, obviously, ran poor in Gorn and might have taken the edge off for Cheltenham. Um, from raw ability point of view, obviously, he's huge ability, but he's not getting any younger. And I don't know. I'd be of the two. I'd be more in the Florian Porter camp, even though Classical Dream is what well, three times his price. Mm. I'd be more in the Florian Porter camp of those two, but um, they wouldn't be the two I'd be focusing on. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. I want to talk about Classical Dream Ruby. Um, was he the last Chatham you rode? When That's you rode? the winner I rode, wasn't he? Did you, you not ride him in the spring? I did, yeah. Yeah, was that your last Chatham? It was. Lovely, last winner. So, when you were going down the post and he was pulling the arms off you, did you think, well, this race is run? No, no, that's him. Uh, I didn't, and... Funny enough, had plenty of conversation with Willie about him as to what his outright trip was. I always believed him to be a stayer. Mm. Um, I think stayers win Supremes. It's, you know, just the first race, atmosphere, noise, tension, everything that can often be run at a ferocious pace. So I think stayers win it. Like Bouvard Air got beaten, I know, by um, Altior and Min, but he was only third in the Supreme and went back to win a champion hurdle. So um, very few Supreme winners win a champion hurdle. It is a staying race. So I wasn't surprised he turned into a stare. But I won't be surprised if Willie contemplates chasing with him either. Oh, yeah. Um, he was all set to go chasing and then didn't. He was declared to run here, actually, one Christmas. And he got injured and he came back and won a punch of sound on his next start over hurdles. So he's kept over hurdles last year. Um, I wonder, could he go chasing with him? 
I know he looks at it. He looks like the the, the standout candidate in the stay in hurdle division for, for from Willie Jard, but um, yeah, it's now or never for chasing two, isn't it? It is like, now or never as yeah. well. So that'll have to be considered. And what are your thoughts on the Bob Allinger switch in terms of? I think it's the right call for him. Yeah. Um, I was never sure of him as a chaser, uh, even from his first start. Uh, I think he's a better hurdler. I don't see him as a champion hurdler, stuff, Frank. I'm sorry. It's okay. That is a well, left field suggestion. Do you, do you right think he's a stair hurdle horse, though? I think he could be, yeah. But fair enough. That's just We've seen so many the of these, sorry, Bob fans, failed novice chasers do it in the three mile you know, uh, hurdling division. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be outrageous to think about Just even watching him winning a nav in one day, it's how strong he hits the line, uh, how he's kept Gallop and stays at it. Um, last year, I don't think it would have mattered what trip he ran him over. I don't think he looked the same horse he did over hurdle. So he never attacked fences. Never. I think last year you kind of had to just put a line through him and um, see how he goes. Liz Mullen here. It'll be an interesting one, but that's the beauty of the season and um, what's going to develop all the way through it. It's why every weekend it'll be interesting. No, oh, it's going to be great. Um, one horse we could be forgiven for, for forgetting about because we didn't see him at the festival last year. Blazing Cal, Charles Burns has been doing all right, hasn't he? And then Frank's eyes just lit up. Did I steal your, your three-miler for the season? He'd be one of two, I man. Uh, definitely, look, um, he's three out of three over hurdles. He's won twice at Cheltenham. He beat, beat Jeleno Bean... Uh, Gillian Obino, is it? I'm terrible with the Gillian names. Gillian Obino? Like that, yeah. yeah, he beat him in a twice at Cheltenham. Uh, that horse went on and won a grade one over three miles at Aintree, Farm Frank. Um, Bally Griffin Cottage was behind him uh, in that three mile race. He came out and finished fourth in the Albert Barlet. So the form points to Blaise and Cal being very good. Um, and you have to remember too, he was Antipo's favourite for the Albert Barlet before he met the setback. Um, Charles, as we've seen in the last couple of weeks, is just exceptional when he uh, targets a race for the horse. Like Run for Oscar is one I'd say he'd lined up with six months and even shoot first um, last weekend in that per times qualifier at Cheltenham. Um, smashed in the market. Be surprised if we see um, him again before Cheltenham. Probably not, mm. but um, you know, he rarely leaves the money behind him. And I've, yeah, I'd be pretty sure the stairs is the aim for Blades and Cal. And he's the up and comer, he, isn't he? Like he's the like the ones we talked he, about. We've kind of seen. Well, yeah, Bob the, like the rumor was there was massive money offered for him, and, and he turned it down. So um, Charles doesn't get it wrong too often. No, he doesn't. Yeah. Or, or ever. It seems. He's the one I think. He's the one that's very interesting, um, and he has been a bit of a mover in the market. I know Charles said that uh, he was weighing up going chase when about teams come out and says that he's definitely going hardly. Um, and the other one is a bit more left field and he might not even run over hurdles but the devil's coachman is I was reading on Mead's stable tour and he was saying he might go back over fences with him this year um, he ran a two fair races over fences last year but he um, seemed to improve dramatically for going up to two miles five uh, when he won I think the Boyne Hurdle at Navin on heavy ground just got up on the line um, but he beat Ashdale Bob that day Commander Fleet was nearly ten lengths back in third Ashdale Bob was third in the Carl Cup off near enough top weight um, and was second to Classical Dream at Punchdown in the Grade 1 while Commander Fleet went and won the Carl Cup. <laughs> it was a really good run. Um, look, he might stay over fences but I'm not sure was he... He didn't convince me massively over fences. He could just be a candidate for dropping back to hurdles and if he did, I think he, you'll see the best of him stepped up to three miles and he could just be one to keep an eye on if um, if chasing doesn't work out and he goes back over hurdles, I think. He could sort of a mark would he have over fences, Frank? The Devil's Coachman. Yeah. He's only run twice, though, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's Picking up on PK's Those theory. Silks. Picking up on PK's Those theory silks. from earlier. Paddy Power. Paddy Power. No silks. One more. He'd be wearing the red cap. I'm not mm. sure which of the caps is the most uh, profitable. Yeah, no, that's probably a fair shout. Yeah. One more run over fences there now in the next couple of weeks. 138 or 139. He could win the Paddy Power en route to the stairs hurdle. The Paddy Power and the Paddy Power Stairs Hurdle. Oh, the no, big double. I'm win. sure producer Mark will put up a big bonus for it. So If you, if you win the Paddy Power, it'd probably be Grand National, wouldn't it? Yeah, you could take the stairs en route. Happy days. Um, he just won if he does work out over Yeah, No, it's a good shout though. Devil's Coach, we'll keep an eye out for him. Um, let's move on to the Mares. Uh, always a tricky division to talk about um, because Mares could stay to Mares Company or they could go to Open Company. Uh, this year, 
Epitante kind of stands out, Ruby, I think, as a, assuming she goes down this route, which is a big assumption, but Nikki does like a soft touch. Yeah, well, with a bit of the bullet last year, though, Maria's rock. I mean, she came back to punch, and I thought she, I thought it was a flash in the pan at Cheltenham, being honest with you, mm. but she backed it up at punch time when she beat Epitan. So, um, like she sets the standard, I, I'd imagine. The horse she beat was a bit disappointing last week when she came at Queensbrook. Queensbrook. Yeah, obviously needed to run on softer ground mm. than expected at Limerick. I'd say Cheltenham would be the be all and end all to Queensbrook. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be taking that defeat too. No, I wouldn't have taken it too, too literally at this time of year either. But um, you're just even looking at it, I, I imagine Allegory, the Vassy, go chasing. Brandy Love likes going left handed, so she could be one from Willie's. Um, Maria's Rock, Epitant. What else is there? Uh, Echoes and Rain. Rain. He disappointed in the race last year. Maybe we. Maybe without the hood, she might be better. She's been running really well on the flat. She to be has, fair, yeah. winning at Galway and second the horses are, which like um, of ninety-seven. Like, I don't know if you could replicate. Like, if she can bring that improvement to hurdles, you mm. know, she'd have to be a player. Um, and she is definitely getting better. Like, yeah, I think she it's, is. A, it's a good division. Like Marie's Rock, you have to remember, Nikki was absolutely in love with her as a novice, and she missed Cheltenham. Um, Look, maybe she's just a bit slow to get the hang of things again after it, but she's improved hugely through last season. And look, Epiton got back to near her best last year. Um, like, to be fair, she was pretty up to Honeysuckle when she made a mistake at the last, and look, she put she beaten less than two lengths. Um, and she was very impressive at she the entry. She wouldn't go down that division, though. She's going to stay in open company, right? Oh, no, I'd say she'd almost certainly go yeah. into the mayor's division this year. Oh, really? Like, n- even en route to Cheltenham? No, she's going to oh, the fight in fifth. Yeah. Oh, she's going to fight in fifth. No, yeah. but I mean, she'll end up in the she mayor's hurdle. She won't okay. run the champion hurdle. I wouldn't have thought unless yeah. something dramatic up. happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, like, you've got plenty in you. You've got Queensbrook. Like, you have to remember, too, Mrs. Miller was very badly hampered in the mayor's last year. Flew home for third. She was very unlucky. Tell me something, girl was travelling really Can't well, have. brought down. Um, Indefatigable was still going well in front when she fell. Like they were three good mares who came out of it too. They're all back again potentially. Like it, it's quite a, a strong division. Then you look at, like we all love watching Brandy Love, and then you have Love Envoy, um, who was a really good winner of the mares novice, and you have Dino Blue and Party Central. Like Dino Blue, you, you kind of get the feeling you haven't seen the best of her either. No, I wouldn't be surprised if she went chasing though. Oh really? It's, it's a, there's the mares chase as well, so. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Allegory, the Blas- the Vassi, Dino Blue, if they were two that could go chasing. Allegory, the Vassi, definitely, she looks like it. Maybe Dino Blue. Um, you know, you've mentioned a few more mares there. So Ellie May gone? She's gone she, now? No, she's still in training. Oh, she's still in training, she's okay. She's back in for another go, so okay. she'd be for the mares chase. Yeah. You're just kind of thinking, I'm still thinking Constitution Hill, Ascot, Epitant, if she's going to go mares, that probably opens the door for him to go to Kempton at Christmas. She might go Rail Keel. Yeah. Two and a half. Be interesting. Has uh, any big truck arrived from France with pink colours or whatever into into Willie Mullins' yard with a bunch of No, the colours are always in the tack room. They oh, don't okay. come with the horses. Okay, fair. Yeah, Thanks, you, Ruby. You, you yeah. I, the think, I think I was trying to make a point. You there. had the hanging up there from one year <laughs> yeah. to the next. All right. um, uh, little but, Ruby again. Uh, pl- plenty of horses have arrived. Oh, good stuff. Yeah. All right, tell us, few, tell us the ones that win. <laughs> Can't think of their names. Oh, um, yeah. No, there's a lot of... Something does something. Yeah, there's a load of those. Um, <laughs> but look, we'll name on something to something. It's almost like check, you know, your, check your open bets there. <laughs> I don't know if there's a something to something, um, <laughs> but there are plenty of of really nice horses that have yeah. come from France. All canter away, even with the rain in the last week or that. They're doing a little bit more, and um, you start to see turned the screw in it. Yeah, nothing has come flying by. You thought, what the hell is that? Is, yeah. is there one? Is there one that just stands out for you yet? No. No, of the new ones. there's not one of the new ones that stands out just yet. They haven't stepped up enough to think, wow, yeah. nothing has taken the eye out of your head going by yet. But then again, there's nothing gone by you're thinking, Jesus, what's that for the wrong reason either? Okay. You, you're right in limbo. But you, like, again, I, I love trying to get a, an insight into how Willie trains and probably other trainers. You're not running races against each other with these horses as of yet. You're, like, you're cantering them, you're doing small no, gallops. And, so. and, and they'll never run race against each other because it's training it's not racing so you don't decide that right we're going to gallop over two miles here at home and figure out which of these is the best um because then you you've had a run at home <laughs> for no money a, for, for no money <laughs> instead of at the races so um no there's there's a big army of horses like obviously no matter what we has been brought in or bought new 
they're going to have to go to get to Fasal Viga's level. Mm. Any of those novice hurdlers. Well, let's go to the novice hurdlers. Let's talk about Fasal Viga. Um, Sorry, I thought you were talking about novices. Yeah, well, no, well, I was talking about mares specifically. No, but, but. no, I didn't see any mares. And there's no open horse that's come in. Yeah. All the new ones are maidens and novices. There's no, not even a James de Burley, but there's nothing that's turned up that's not, that's a potential champion hurdle horse or a potential open arse they're all novices is he what? back in work actually boy he is James de Burley. he's interesting huh? he, he is, is very awesome. interesting James de Burley. keep an eye out for him um, Fasal Vega couldn't have been any more impressive here at Leprosan where we're recording and then obviously brilliant to Cheltenham and then a real battle at Punchestown did that show that he was he had battling spirit as well Ruby or did it show that maybe they were catching up on him it shows you can do it everywhere um, look we were forgiven different horses for poor runs at the end of the season and I'd say he was a bit below at Punchestown compared to where he was at Cheltenham or here at the Dublin Racing Festival. But you just have to love the way that he still managed to win. So, look, he's a really good horse. He's, he hasn't gotten any stronger. He's a big, tall, light-framed horse, but he does look really well. He's a good jumper, um, and he's hugely exciting. Oh, yeah. I think, I think there's an element of, like, Redemption Day is a lot better than he showed at Cheltenham too. Um, yeah. I would have thought the heavy ground would have suited him. And he just probably came back to his level. Um, they're two very good horses, more so than anything. You said last season ahead of the novice hurdlers, you said whatever race or Gerhard runs, Supreme Ballymore, he'll win. Um, Fasal V kind of in that territory because you would assume a bumper winner, two and a half, should be no problem. I think he can do both, yeah. yeah. I would be surprised if he's have, having to be sent in a particular direction to maximise his potential. I think he could... I think if you saw Wish PK, you could drop him in there and he'd win the Alba Bartle. I mean, why not? It's turned out to be a good race. Um, I would be a surprise, though. Look, he, are, you as, I, are you as excited at him as you have been about other really top-class bumper horses from the yard? Like, because there's been so many. But um, he does seem... The breeding, I think, helps as well. Because does, we all think yeah, of there's Kuviga. The, there's, the, there's the attachment there. Yeah. But I, I, he's excited about him. I, I, to be honest, I'd probably get more excited about... Gallop in the Champ, stepping into Open Company, or uh, Stateman, Sir Gerhard, stepping into the Open Company. I think I may be different to a lot of people. Yeah, I love the potential that's coming through, but it's the Open races are the championship races, and they're the ones that really float my boat. So, novices are great, but it's about championship horses, and we often run away with bumper horses, novice hurdlers, and talk them up and talk them up, and don't talk enough about the championship horses. Um, you know, he, he's, a, he's a good novice. He has three options as to which novice hurdle he could end up in. Um, he'll start in a maiden hurdle. He'll end up here, hopefully, at Christmas, back here at Dublin Racing Festival. And that's the road he'll go. Is he... I saw what he's saying. He thinks he's like... I actually, couldn't, you're right. So he mightn't end up here at Christmas. He could end up in Nace in the Lawlers yeah. early, in new, early in the new it's year. It's January, isn't it, yeah? January. So, you know, it'll be interesting what... You know, after he wins a maiden hurdle, where he goes, and what else has won maiden hurdles, and what way it splits up then. I mean, we're getting plenty of rain at the moment, so hopefully that would allow you to get a lot of maidens out earlier all through November, which means you have novices at Christmas rather than having a dry November, dry early December, and instead of running in the novice hurdles here at Christmas, you're running in the bleeding maidens. So, um, you know, hopefully the rain keeps coming. The obviously difference between a bumper horse and a hurdler slash chaser, big difference. You've got to be able to do it. Is there any of those many bumper winners from last season, Redemption Day and others that you think oh, he'll improve, he'll get better over hurdles or she? Madman's game. Looks like one that would definitely get better. Um, Seabank, Bristro, Fasal Viga. Um, do you think Fasal Viga will improve for the for the hurdling as well? I don't think he needs them. Once he doesn't, yes, dis- once, he doesn't my... once he doesn't disimprove, he'll be honest. Yeah, because well, I was like, yeah, if he because gets C-Bank better. Because Seabank does strike you as one for the yeah. other part, doesn't he? Yeah, like... so does Madman's game. Um, okay. There'd be two stairs, definitely. Um, Rob Carson, who has kindly provided all the notes, and they have been extensive and brilliant, uh, he mentioned to me a horse called Lossy Mouth that has been word for. Do you know anything about yeah, this? Yeah, I saw, actually watched it on, watched it winning on, in France, on a some sort of a link last week, there was a load of willies came up on a link somewhere. The horses that had come from France, uh, Lassie Mouth, um, it looked really impressive. But 
you're looking at them winning and it's fair play to anybody that, that, can, that can judge it. I'm not a great, plenty will say I'm an ordinary judge of, judge of Irish and English form, but I'm definitely a poor judge of French form. So what they're beating in France, I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. But a lot, yeah, there's a load of them. That but people have, probably put two and two together. Harold Kirk might have bought it. It's now carrying the Rich Richie Silks, which we're told she may be. Is it she? Yeah, she may be. So I guess they're thinking, well, there we go. That's the triumph hurdle, Philly. Lossy mouth. Lossy mouth. Yeah, and I watched her going by every morning thinking it's flossy mouth. Oh, yeah, no, no, <laughs> lossy it, says mouth. Lossy, it says lossy mouth here. You can check her teeth next time as well, but uh, I've got lossy mouth, flossy mouth, whatever. It's a new fish cake. You have the flossy mouth after your fish cake and your jam bombs. Yeah. don't call her flossy <laughs> mouth. No, no. Uh, Frank, um, you're my Gordon Elliott representative according to the notes. Marine National. <laughs> Uh, he trained my very home. Yep, and uh, how's he going? Is he you, you formerly with Gordon Elliott, according to my notes? <laughs> uh, no, I think you were supposed to talk about Gordon Tarsus, eh? Yeah. What, give, us one, give us one. Give us one from the Gordon Elliott yard. We'll cut that I'll part out. It's I'll, fine. I'll, I'll Editor is unreal. I'll give you two. Okay. Uh, well, the obvious one's America, Mike. Um, very impressive when he won that list of Bumper and Avon. Time was good. Second b- battling Bessie. Um, was just beating a nose in the Grade Two Mayor's Bumper, the Dublin Racing Festival. She was beating. A little over length in the grade three mayor's bumper of Punchestown. Absolutely destroyed her. Um, was second to Facile Vega. You hear how positive Ruby is about Facile Vega and how good he thinks he is. And American Mike was the only one to really give her, give him a race. Um, again, I'd forgive him the run at Punchestown. I think when you look into the stats, plenty of gardens run below form by the time they get to Punchestown. Um, I wouldn't pay much attention to that run. And I would look more at the, the Navin and Cheltenham run as a mark of what he's capable of. And to me, he looks more like two and a half miles at least. Um, you think that's the route he'd probably go down. He's very obvious. And then one, um, a point-to-pointer, uh, the man driving Duvan. Uh, apparently, one is point-to-point. I think the rumour was he went for huge money after winning it. Made his bumper debut at Punchstown at the end of May last year. Uh, was 11 to 8 favourite. All the hype about him. Got beaten in second. I suppose at the time you might have been, oh, his bubbles burst a small bit. The horse that beat him was Marie Nationale. So I think it was a really hot bumper for the time of year. I think if you go back, am I right in saying City Island may have won it okay. um, back in 2018? So um, he's a horse that might end up more Albert Bartlett or something. But um, yeah, the initial maybe disappointment of him getting beaten in a bumper, I think he might have bumped into a really good one. And he's one to definitely keep an eye on. Okay. He, He'll win races this year. Duman driving Duvan. Yeah. Good name. Um, Marine National. Barry Connell's horses, um, it'd be interesting to see if he can maintain this over the season. That's Look, phenomenal. He's having an unbelievable run. At the very, like we're into the summer jump start of the national season, so there can often be, Ruby tells us all the time, summer jumps form. Look, you know, it's not as strong as winter form. So No, but at the same time, I think that bumper he won was strong for the time of year. And the manner in which he won was really taking. And then he goes down to Clarny and... He wins in the same sort of manner, carrying a penalty. And you're like, Jesus, maybe he's better than, you know, he's better than just a summer horse. And but he won in May. That bumper was in May. The Marine end of the yeah. and, and the man driving the van. So in the May, you're, you're, Yeah, there was a few still, those spread boss head come out. Yeah, it's things still and stuff. spring form yeah. at okay. that time. It's not till you kind of get... It's not like he's winning your own summer, summer form. form right? like, you know? um, and like, I was really taken with the way he won over hurdles. Look, it was more jumping first time out I thought he was really fast and accurate in the main and um, I would be I know people were kind of knocking him going oh what was he 20 to 1 and he's even shorter now for the Supreme thing it's a terrible price but he looks a horse of huge uh, potential and I wouldn't be There's been th- one out already though I think has huge potential and we haven't mentioned him at all is Champ Kiley Yeah I, I, I think he's a proper one like he was very good in Galway bolted in in Tipperary 2, 2 and a half He's going to go for the Royal Bond. Isn't yeah, he? he's going to set a fair so stand up. The for two of them against each other, the Royal Bond could be a cracking race. Could be a cracking race, yeah. Um, Where could Champ Kylie end up in terms of if he wins the Royal Bond, stays? Because last year's Royal Bond was. If he wins the Royal Bond, he'll end up here for the Paddy Power Future Stars. Um, that's the road he'll go. And after that, then Dublin yeah. Racing Festival. But like, you're looking at what's going to. Like, that's a proper weekend early in Ferry House. So you could have Marine National versus Champ Kylie, Novice Chasers. Probably from the back end of the summer ones, authorised artist setting the standard. You'd be probably thinking there's better ones than him coming, but the beginner chases Ida's boy is already one. There's two for that. And what happens in the next fortnight to to almost three weeks that'll still give you time to run in the dream more. So that's gonna be that'll be saucy right then too. 
It appears as though uh, British horses may not bother turning up to any of the novice hurdlers, hurdles at Cheltenham because uh, we haven't talked about a single one. But Frank turns his page to give us a couple. Look, uh, with a view to Cheltenham, looking at the way the bumper went, you wouldn't be overly hopeful for them. Hmm. But I have some horses to follow. But that's always the case anyway. And oh, they, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. I know. But uh, I have some horse to follow maybe to win English races before the Irish come over. Uh, <laughs> the first one's Springwell Bay. This is obviously Monday to Friday looking at last weekend, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Springwell Bay for John Joneal. Look, beaten less than length by Adamantly Chosen and Bumper Debut. Actually, a horse I... I kind of like the way he's been jumping. Yeah, he's he'd probably go dream more as well. Yeah, so, like, there's, there's a nice horses. There's three make, so. you've got racked up. I just think that the difference... Sorry, before we go in, off on a completely different tangent, like even adamantly chosen authorised art, uh, they've racked up two and three wins now. And Tully, was it Tully Beg that I remember what won in Chatham last weekend? Yeah, Brad, Brad, no, it? David Ward, oh, Davy Russell won on for Garden. Uh, oh, Chemical Energy. Yeah, Chemical, Chemical, Chemical energy. energy. Like they're setting the standard now. I think they're going to be that calibre horse will be what the Irish are competing with in handicaps come mm. March. Yeah. 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 It's the transitionary period, isn't it, where you get those. But go on, give us a few knots um, from just the UK. Springwell Bay was beaten less than length by Adam Lee Chosen uh, back in 2021. Moved to John Joe for €155,000, I think. Very impressive winning a bumper last around November or December last year at Market Raisin. Wasn't seen again uh, for the rest of the season. Um, made his hardest debut at Carlisle there recently. I thought he was relatively impressive. Um, I think he could pick up a good race or two in the UK and considering it's a decent novice trained by John Joe, bet for a hurdle would be on the agenda, I would think, mm -hmm. um, come February and he might end up being one of the better UK novices. Um, Authorised Speed's another one for Gary Moore. He was fifth in the champion bumper. Um, I think he was beaten favourite in a list of bumper prior to that, but it was steadily run. He was held up and him and Holland back were held up. They finished fourth and fifth. Holland back went and finished second in the entry. Um, grade two bumper afterwards like his fifth in the champion bumper solid he's another one that should make into a hurdler and again Gary Moore is a, a trainer likes to target that bet for hurdle wouldn't be surprised if he's another one that could win a nice race and end up there uh, look away Neil King says the best horse ever trained um, to be fair he, he said too he hadn't done much work with him prior to him winning a bumper at Newbury he was very well backed though so he would obviously done enough work with him to land a punt and he went and was a uh, he was an impressive winner of the entry bumper, albeit he went off 28 to 1. Um, he has a bit of potential as well. Um, probably could step up to two and a half miles too. And the last one then is just for the Mayor's Division. Um, poetic Music uh, was three out of three in bumpers. Um, winning a, layers, a Mayor's listed bumper at Cheltenham on New Year's Day was six in the champion bumper. Um, I don't think a heavy ground would really have suited her. I think she... Um, she retains a bit of a potential going to the Mayor's and Obvious Division. Um, and then just a few Irish ones. They're ones to concentrate in England. I wouldn't be saying back and for Cheltenham or anything, but... Just keep an eye out for races, them, though, to be fair. They yeah. win, win races in the UK. OK, and you've got um, more of them, Ireland, the ones we haven't talked about. I uh, just can ask Ruby about two of them. No risk, no fun. He's three out of three after winning two bumpers and bowled you up in the hurdles. One well, he stole, didn't he? He stole. Might end up being more of a county hurdle horse than maybe Possibly. a supreme. And then Iker de Beau won um, that valuable fairy house bumper. Um, beating Lecky Watson. Two of them are probably useful as well. And then, of course, we've got, I'm trying to think, the highest rated flat horse to go over hurdles. In, in, Could it be ever? I don't know. In, I didn't, didn't they threaten to go hurdling with Casual Conquest? I don't think he ever did. He and never he was, did, no. Yeah. What, uh, so what's high definition? High bring? definition rated 117. 117? When was the last time he ran to it? Well, he was second in the Tarot Tarot Gold Cup, beating yeah. the neck by Alan Kerr. That's like, not bad. Yeah. You know, uh, He's got Leo, though, right? I can't I remember. I assume he's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've had this conversation. They're useless over Hertz. Oh, it's high, it's high definition. Yeah. Does he stay? I don't. Well, he did, I don't well, think he stays Well, his best runs are all or, over a mile a quarter yeah. or a mile, right? Mile, Albeit a mile, a mile one was over a two, as a two-year-old. So everyone assumes he was going to stay. Yeah, but he watched them up to a mile and a half in a flat. Did he really stay? I don't think he stayed a mile and a half. His no. best was a four and ten furlongs. But can't a lot of, Ruby, a lot of mile and a quarter horses stay two miles over hurdles because you're going that bit slower to jump the hurdle? But that's... Yeah, you have to jump and I don't know. I did just he hasn't ever struck me as a horse that you're thinking, wow, that'll be some hurdle, but maybe he will be. Yeah, maybe. yeah, it's just it's just more the rating. Like there's plenty of horses that have been rated in around you know 100, 105 gone over hurdles have been 
ultimately disappointing. Mm. Um, he might fall into that bracket, but just from well, he's like, going to be disappointed because like, unless unless he like wins what, every race, he yeah, runs like it. Right? Eric, he was probably he was high. Close, you know, one ten or maybe a little bit higher. Was he? Was he? Wow. Because remember, he'd won. Um, had he won a list of race the flat at Limerick, and. Hebridean is one I'll throw out there as well. That Joe's uh, in the in Amory's colours that Paul Nichols trained, um, yeah. but yeah, it didn't end up being any use. And but did he uh, not win a good race at Aintree, no? He could have, he could have. But yeah, high definition over hurdles is fascinating. Yeah, someone, uh, do you know what would know? Rory Delary would definitely know. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, ask him when he's next on. Higher, yeah, we'll, we'll ask him when he's just next Just again, on. you have to mention him, like a horse oh, that yeah. rating going over hurdles. If he did happen to stay, and be able to know. jump. Also crucial. Yes. Going to Joseph O'Brien in case board. you missed the news uh, yes. is, is is high definition. And Any obviously more? we didn't mention the nice guy, but he's looks like he's going to miss the season. In case you're wondering why we didn't mention him in the staying order in the department. Malcolm Denmark. That's the, 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 cur- the curse of the Malcolm Denmark silks, Frank. They are the, is for, I, just thought, I just thought I was think back to um, Monsignor. Yeah. Well, yeah, that is one of absolutely. Well, I, I would say now the best performance I've seen. Yeah. Maybe I would think he would have been young enough as well. Yeah. Short trousers? I would have been... Short trousers? Nearly 19, would I be? Okay, so you had a bet on that. Uh, I did A legal bet, which is great. I wasn't much of a gambler then. Maybe another two years' time, maybe I really was into my horse racing. Good man, good man. I think we've covered the novice herders. Anyone else want to make... Frank, you've got a list in front of you. Have you covered I had to it? mention, I just... Ecker de Bois, is he... What kind of... Ecker de Bois. De Bois, sorry, you know my French pronunciation is terrible. Is that that little grey horse that ran as a four year old last year? He won the fairy house bumper with the orange colours. Oh, I care De Bois, yeah. Yeah, you were thinking about uh, Care Allen, I think. No, there was another one. There's too many Allen. Like Triumph. Um, in Echoes and Rain's colours. Oh, Il Etemp. Il Etemp. Il Etemp. Is she still made? He. Yeah. He? He's still he's a maiden, so he. Yeah. Okay. He'll win a maiden. Yeah. Gallic Warriors, a maiden. And that horse, they tried to sell him here, didn't they? The... Champions Weekend sale, the horse you mentioned. He cared. Did Bob? Well, yeah. Oh, did he they? was unsold here that day, yeah. Did it he won sell the and I, I brought my wallet. So yeah, I, well, it was, it was last I checked, they were well past the six figure mark. <laughs> there was four horses for sale in the parade. I do before think we were on the st- I think we were on the stage that day. Yeah, we were. Do you remember Matt Teague was actually sold that day? I don't, think, actually, I don't think he was sold. He, I don't think he, any of them sold. I think he was sad. sold, yeah. He was oh, was sold. he? Well, he won, yeah. I think he went for 115. And then he, he obviously went to Sedgefield, won, went to France, won. Yeah. And you'd imagine he'd be sold. And he won 70 grand for winning he the race He was going back France. to France for another one, 280 large. Oh, and then they'll send him out of the if you want. Emma Mullins is something else. Paul Byrne never. <laughs> Paul Byrne. He rarely makes uh, a mistake. That, that one too, yeah. He's, he's pretty good. I'll, I'll, a uh, person to follow, Paul Byrne, for the season. That'll be my person rather than horses to follow. Um, right, lads, uh, wrap up with a free bet for any hurdle race at the Champlain Festival 2023. Obviously, a horse to win said hurdle race. Off you go, Frank. you got a massive smile on your face. Um, blazing Cal for the stairs. Oh, lovely. Okay, the Paddy Pear stairs. Paddy Pear stairs. Ruby? I think seven to two is an unbelievable price with honeysuckle. Ooh, an unbelievable price about honeysuckle. I actually have one more horse as well. I forgot to mention. Go for it. The only horse to beat Constitution Hill. I'll be very lucky. Is in he still? Any harm in asking? He's an entry in the Great Wood Hurdle. Um, Did he win that Catholic race he ran in? He won a Catholic race, bolted up. Then obviously, um, obviously, like, yeah. But uh, he's gone up to a mark of one hundred and thirty-seven. But um, he's entered the Great Wood. He's Have gone. you seen the footage of him beating Constitution Hill in the point of Oh, point? he was very lucky. How lucky did Constitution uh, Hill walk Constitu- through every fence? Constitution Hill walked through the last one. Oh, like, okay. Um, right. He would have, Constitution Hill would have won. No, he would have hammered him, but yeah. he would have beat him. Like, But, um, yeah, look, just even taking that aside, he's a horse with plenty of ability. Um, he was learning his trade in Maiden and Abbott's Hurdles, and you just feel there's a nice... Yeah, still the only, handicap. still the only horse to beat Constitution Hill in public. Uh, uh, any harm in asking? I'd say by the end of the next season, he's still, he's still the, the only, only horse to beat uh, Constitution Hill. <laughs> Hope you really enjoyed that, folks. Thanks a million for our national season preview. We will, of course, be back with more podcasts, regular podcasts from the horses made looking ahead to the weekend racing, and also don't forget. Next year rolls around, we'll begin our countdown to Cheltenham. If you can't get enough of your Cheltenham, just do keep and stay tuned. But until then, thanks, Frank. Thanks, Ruby. We're off to the water of the course here now at Leperson, so they get a good, nice, soft ground for the festival. They're air rating it anyway, so happy to start. It's the beginning of October. Until next time, folks, take it easy.